it's me. I'm here this time. We're talking about Moon Knight. And I'm back. And we're doing episodes two and three. Um, Some of the, the suit. suit. And the friendly type. And uh, we got a lot to talk about. Who are I'm, we? Uh, I'm uh, the fake nerds. That's just... And I'm Sparks Witty. And you're Ryan Eliopoulos. Hello. And that's Brand T. McClure. And Hello. that's Ben Magnet. And we're all here to... Uh, dig into some moon night i listened to you guys talk about the first episode i pretty much agree with a lot of things you guys had to say i was like yeah i'd, I'd basically just be like yeah that's real good that's real good if i was there that last time so like not not a ton to add to that so we're gonna get into these episodes and see how we feel i'm less hot after watching episode three a second time so mm. that's where i'm starting from but let's do episode two first yes i liked episode two quite a lot i did too um so yeah um how do you guys feel about episode two? I'm assuming you you shook your heads as well. I also really liked the episode two. Yes. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Episode two was really good. Um, honestly, one of my my favorite part of episode two was when we saw Mister Knight. I know we were gonna see Mister Knight. I was like, I kind of I really like how um uh, whoever is like controlling the body, their suits different. Um, outside of that, I still I was like, man, I'm really looking forward to the show. I can't wait to see what's going on. We're going it. We're doing some fun. Sh- we're doing some fun stuff. And yeah, episode two was really good. Yeah. I didn't expect Mr. Knight this early, to be honest. No, um, since we're all right there, can we just can we just go through the Mr. Knight stuff? Sure. Because yeah. like uh, for me, uh, we've talked about like it being Ryan and I've talked about this a lot. Uh, him being different from the comics, and I think like um, ultimately where I landed on it is that I, I have less familiarity than you, mm-hmm. but some familiarity with with Moon Knight, very very minimal with Mr. Knight. But my thing is that I think what they wanted to stay away from is the idea that Mr. Knight would be a they didn't want to go too close to the concept of did being something where you can construct a personality yeah. and i think that's where they kind of ran up to a wall with mr knight that they didn't really want to convey it in that sense like oh yeah did works as like i can create a tool for this situation yeah, i need and I to be that's... i need to be an egyptian so i'll just turn into the egyptian guy so, uh, yeah. Yeah. so i think that's why they wanted to stay away from that interpretation yeah for mr knight or like not even come close to it so i think with that in mind and also for like newer audience members i think mr knight's portrayal here is both fun and actually really unique yeah. and cool and i think it serves narrative purpose well uh i i also feel like mr knight can evolve but i like this i honestly i just love the interpretation of it i love steven uh trying to concoct what the suit would be mm-hmm, mm-hmm. from his own mind. And this is what he comes up with. Because when, when you hear suit, you don't think superhero suit. Right. You think three-piece tuxedo. Uh, kind of suit. And, yeah. it's, and it's, it's a very goofy presence. But the, the main thing that I love about it is that I can always tell that he's real. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, that, that's, that, that's automatically, one thing. that automatically puts me enjoying Mr. Knight on screen more than Moon Knight right now is that I can always tell Mr. Knight is real. Yeah. So I did some digging on this one. Both suits are real. Um, not the, all the time. Not so. The stunt suit is the one where we where we rub against, up, up against when it comes to Moon Knight. So the stunt suit for Moon Knight has a CGI cape. It doesn't have a physical cape, but when Oscar Isaac is wearing it, it's always a physical cape. So that's why in episode three, just to skip ahead, that's when when the guy grabs the cape, it looks very CG. It looks bad because the seat because the stunt suit doesn't have a cape. This cape is CG. Yeah. The other thing is when Moon Knight. It, so if you remember there's a behind the scenes picture like from an early leaks trailer that had a very gray looking moon knight suit it's because like that's better it's because the cgi and that's because the cgi that they put over the suit isn't covering it like it does for spider-man it's to make it whiter it's to make it whiter within the, dark, the darker scenes and i don't think that's a terrible idea i just don't think it's handled quite as deftly as it probably should be i even if it's a real suit that suit still looks fake a lot of the time. That's, I, don't that's, even, that's, I don't even care if it's a real suit. They put CGI on it, so it looks like it's a. It looks like a green. It's not as bad as Green Lantern, but I feel the Green Lantern effect where I'm like, I know that's not really there, even though it is there. That's that's more my point yeah. of what I was saying is that um, when I'm watching Mister Knight, I can tell when it's a real suit. Yeah. When I'm watching Moon Knight, I can't most of the time because of how the CGI is being done over it. So regardless of if it is real, like the CGI is hurting rather than contributing yeah Most it is just a, it's making it feel faker than it actually would be it is just an interesting thing because there is there is 
you know, not even arguably, there's just less CGI over the Moon Knight suit than on the Spider-Man suit, and yet it still activates the same sensation in us. Um, the it's it's not a complete suit replacement like with Spider-Man. It is just coloring it in a different way, and it's such a weird thing. It's such a weird like vis- like visual experiment to be like, no, I'm still feeling like this is still a fake suit like I have with Spider-Man. It, it's just interesting, I think. I think there's just I think there's. I think it's too textured. Yeah. And for the CGI to help it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If it were this textured and always real, right? And it were bright enough on its own, that kind of thing. I don't think it would be as much of an issue. But the fact that like they they've gone so complicated with like and I get it. I get why the design is the way it is, but that they, they've gone so complicated with all the layers of the the wraps and everything for it. Yeah. It makes it so that when the CGI puts it on him, it's hard to see when the CGI stops being there yeah. or stops yeah. where the CGI begins and ends. And that makes it harder for me to buy. And I think if honestly, this is one of those times where I'm like a more simplistic design might've been better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because Mr. Knight looks really good and clean by comparison. Um, I'm kind of sitting here hoping that we'll actually lose the wraps eventually. And Moon Knight will, will get sleeker uh, by choice. Um, I guess it depends on what Lockley suit looks like. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm kind of hoping. I'm hoping that we're going to get a sleeker design, uh, more comic uh, accurate, because I think just like really skimping it down to what it is most of the time in the comics yeah. would actually look better. I uh, yeah. I like the idea of the wrap and the texture. I do too. But I think it's it's hurting it's, it visually. I'm not sure what they could do about it at this point. It, it like, a, it, yeah. unless it's always going to be real. It's a tricky situation because it's like the Spider-Man thing where like, Spider-Man just has a techno suit. It just, it's on him at all the times, right? He's not going to run into a bathroom to change. If Moon Knight's about to, about to fight a bunch of mercenaries, he's not going to run into the bathroom to put his Moon Knight costume on, right? Yeah. He's got to summon the suit, right? That makes sense. I get that. It's, it's just when you have to rely even a little bit on CGI, like if it's not going to be 100% like your other Disney products, like, and we talked about it last time, Brandon. Like, I don't like, I don't like negging on CGI so much because it's not, it's not core to the story. But when your main character is CGI, and I have to look at it the entire time, and there are ways to make it look better when a other version of your character, Mr. Knight, is real and looks good. I'm just like, why did you make this decision? That's that's, that's mm-hmm. the thing where I'm at. I'm like, it doesn't look as good if it was just real. That's, I don't get it. That's a that's a good point where like maybe just a higher budget, which we know the show has has a smaller budget. Yeah. Maybe this would have solve that problem that they could have put more resources just to making it look look better yeah in the blending i don't know i don't know i just know that when i watch moon knight i have a hard time sometimes seeing where he looks real there's something weird about like the the portions when he's in movement between the face it's like super and the smooth body. it's very there's smooth. something strange going yeah. on there mm-hmm. um and i'm talking like i'm talking when he's like in fight scenes not when we're like on the roof and it's clearly like the full cgi yeah. shot or something like that i'm, I'm i do mean like when he's uh, it should be the practical suit, but there's something happening between the blend that makes his head not quite look portioned right with the body. I don't know what's up there. I will compliment the CGI on the eyes for both Moon Knight and Mr. Knight. I yeah. think it looks so good. The, the expressiveness is very clear for mm-hmm. both of them. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Really a cool effect. I really like it. And and I do like I do like the design now that we're we're with it. I really like the mummy design <clears throat> for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's a great look. I think like the way he summons it is really cool. Uh, and even Mr. Knight, like I'm still the comic version of me is fighting Mr. Knight just because that's who I grew up reading and stuff like that. Like it's it, but like I think what they're doing, it's working well. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's really great to give each uh, each identity his own Moon Knight costume, because like we said in the last episode uh, in the comics, Mark Spector is Moon Knight. He is all the Moon Knights. He is Mr. Knight. He is he just he he becomes a detective when he needs to be. He is this way. And then in in a way. Um, he does become the 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 taxi driver when he needs to be, which can be done uh, in uh, maybe uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like not not sensitive ways, but I think of Doom Patrol and Doom Patrol is a show we really love, and that's sure. a show that deals mm-hmm. with it very well. So mm-hmm. if they just handle it like Doom Patrol, where it's not like I need you for your specific skull right now, get out there, and it's more like a personal thing. And I think they did it well in episode three with the Egyptian stuff with Stephen and Mark. So like I'm not worried about that stuff anymore. Um, I, yeah, I I actually think I actually think how they're handling the DID in both these episodes, just blanket, uh, is pretty well. Yeah, I have not I've not I don't have DID, and I personally I don't really understand a lot of like the nuances of DID, so I don't I can't speak to the experiences of of of, of others for that. But I 
don't think there's anything particularly wrong about what they're doing. Um, so I, I have tried to listen to a lot of things about this and I think Doom Patrol is an excellent example. I'm really gr- glad you brought it up. And the key thing for me is that if we get to the end of the six episodes and nothing has been, um, done to, to kind of carve out, I don't want to say like the, the origin of their, how we, how of their DID it. or that, but if we don't get the direct acknowledgement that they're Steven or, or Mark or, or, you know, whoever is, is created from trauma. Yeah. Then that I think is where like the inherently the, the representation of DID is like at its most not good Yeah, because mm-hmm. the, the consistent, like DID is very complicated, but the consistent thing is, is that personalities are manifested in response to trauma. Mm-hmm. And that's, mm-hmm. that's really where it comes from. Everything is kind of a trigger to managing trauma. And we need some indication that, that's why he has this yeah uh that these personalities stem from trauma um so i hope that we get some indication of that even if it's not like we're gonna go deep and fully explore whole the whole backstory. reason of yeah. like what right. Just, i need to know that it's because of trauma it is a trauma that triggers this. yeah uh, uh the, the, the existence that is like the core and again like that's what's so very key and cru- cr- crucial right from the jump it's very clear that that's what's why DID is so prevalent for Crazy Jane yeah. in Doom Patrol. That is yeah. the core. And that's why that DID representation is so, I think, concrete. This one, I think, is still living in the nebulous of, like, not not doing a bad job, but also still playing in, like, the the kind of... the Surf- split, Surface level. The, the split territory of yeah. where um, sometimes it's just, like, cool storytelling devices and not as much, like, about representation. And And the thing is, like, I think that there, there's also room where I don't think someone else worded this better than me, um, but that DID is not so um, pervasive of a disability that you need to be always like spot on. Uh, and I think Moon Knight's a good character of, of discussing this, of like your representation, because we still have so little fundamental understanding of it uh, that you kind of can't get perfect representation no matter what you do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so because of that, and again, like the only thing that I think is is a true consistent, like clear thing is trauma equals this. And and that's about it. But, but then anything more elaborate than that is very hard. And so when you're wanting to create these narratives of like different people living inside a single body, that kind of thing, I think there's an amount where we kind of have to go, sometimes it's better to just really step far away and try not to embrace the DID of it and say yeah. like, this is, this is more for our narrative story of like, we, we want to tell a story about different people living in a body rather than saying we want to be a really accurate we want representation to- of DID yes. because that's really a, a tough call and hard to do and almost insurmountable in a lot of ways. And that's yeah. where, and that's where, again, we'll have to wait and see to the end of the season, but like this being a Disney show, I, I still don't believe Disney will fully give it the respect that it deserves that the comics generally do. Um, just just because like, they got to do four quadrants. They got to supply, they got to serve everyone. So like, I'm not convinced we will get something that, that in depth. Yeah. That doesn't mean that it can't be an enjoyable show, right. but when you're dealing with a character that is normally a little more, a little more gravitas, a little more in depth, it just bums me out. Cause I'm like, Oh, we're just going to get a really good. But I think, I show, think, I, guess. I think to Sparks's point, what Sparks brought up was real, was, was really interesting. The fact that like, even if, um, the showrunner of the show has the best intentions to want to be a positive, uh, f- uh, a positive uh, representation for DID because it is such a such a insurmountable task at this point in time. It, no matter what, the best intentions you will fall short. Yeah, and I, mean, I, like, I think that's uh, that's important to realize. Yeah, yeah, and I think that like this goes back to the history of Moon Knight. This goes back to the history of of doing these kinds of appearances on screen for forever. Mm-hmm. Is that we our concept of it and our understanding is constantly evolving because it's still so misunderstood it's still so um trying to think of the right word stereotypes not it but it's still Mm -hmm. so just like viewed through a very specific lens that it's hard to uh treat with absolute clear sincerity people still think it's schizophrenia like, that's, that's they're still like they're still of like people think it's a different disorder like right. it's still yeah. people and, don't even but, know yeah. but like even people in the study like it's it's truly like there's very little work that has ever been like crafted and most of it's just like writings yeah by people who have it 
And so there's, it's very hard to understand that perspective and like what that really is because there is just so little resource yeah. for getting that window. And we still just have such limited understanding that at a certain point, like I enjoy the narratives about like multiple people living inside of a body. I yeah. don't necessarily always think that they're great representatives of DID. Mm -hmm. Uh, that I don't think that those things necessarily have to always be of a mutual plane. Yeah. Right. Uh, sometimes you just kind of have to go, I want to enjoy a story that's using this story element, but not necessarily saying I am also a good representation of DID. And I, it's kind of one of those things where I'm like, I wonder how Moon Knight, the show is necessarily going to land on that. If it's going to say like, that would be what the trauma thing is like. Yeah. And, and honestly, I think that's enough. Like if you say like trauma triggered this cool, that is like the baseline of yes. Great. That's DID. You got it. All right. You're doing the best you can from there. Yeah. Uh, or are you just going to like, it's not DID. Like it's, it's more complicated. It's a Marvel universe thing. Just like anything else that's made up in the Marvel universe. Like this is its own. Don't try to draw too much association because it yeah. can't be a perfect representation of it. Yeah. So we'll see where it lands. Yeah. Um, I want to go back to something that Ryan, that uh, Ryan said uh, a little bit a little bit ago. If we're if we're okay with moving off of the DID discussion real quickly, yeah, it's something I, I think I just wanted to cover because like we were already entering that in episode one, and, and that yeah. was one of the things I was like definitely have been thinking about a lot, especially as we've gotten into the. But let's talk about the the story itself. Well, uh, Ryan, you said something about like um, how your 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 comic self is kind of rubbing up against Mister Knight, even though you, as a story it, you felt it worked for you. Um, yeah. The, the thing that I, I reminded me of a conversation I had with a friend recently where, where, where he was, where he was talking about how much he hated the new Halo TV series because it wasn't like the game. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and, and this, this gentleman is not like us. And this gentleman uh, needs everything to be a one-to-one. -one. It needs to be exactly the same thing that yeah. I've already seen for in a different medium. Um, and I think that, uh, and I, I think that what's, what's always, what I, what I always fall under is, is if, what you're changing works for your story that should trump anything else. Yeah. So if you say, I want to do this way, I want to make this, I want to make Mr. Knight a suit for Stephen Grant. And I want that to be the narrative. And I want to do If it works for your story, I think it's absolutely forgivable to make that, to make that change because your story needs to come first. And it's not even, it's not even, not even so much the story, honestly, it's the character. Is, yeah. is, the, is the core of the character still there? And that was the thing when I first watched the episode was like, I just don't know how I feel about this. Yeah. Uh, but watching it again, reading people online, like this doesn't take away the fact that Mark deals with his DID. This, uh, this anything, this just gives Steven more to do because mm -hmm. you've read a couple comics, Brandon, uh, Moon Knight comics. Mark mm -hmm. Spector is the main guy. Steven and Jake, they are side characters who get brought in. They are never the leads. They're mm -hmm. always guys who come in when they need to get brought in for certain things. Um, so like the fact that they're giving Steven and potentially Jake more to actually do is, is exciting. Uh, because like, cause like when we talk about like, we don't want to, we don't want to use the idea. It's just like, Oh, we need Steven because he's got the money. And like the comics don't do that, but like, I can see why that could be the direction they go in the show. And I'm glad they don't. Cause I think yeah. giving Steven, first of all, giving him his own powers so he can grow as his own hero. So by the time, you know, in two, three years, he will be the Mr. Knight that we do know where he is suave, sophisticated, and he actually is British and he sounds, and he looks cool, but the British man, like mm -hmm. that all works. I see the trajectory of that working. Right. Um, yeah. A lot of fans online are having a problem with that. And I just think they just need to just kind of get over it because if it, a sense bad, that you... if it was bad, that'd be a different story. But I don't think it's bad. I think it's executed well. Right. There's a sense that that a lot of the times people need to kind of get out of their own way and yeah. and embrace and embrace a, a different thing. Mm -hmm. um, as as... That I'm really glad you brought that up because that's that's what I was thinking when we said it earlier to bring up too is that it makes it so that you, you know like let's go back to like really younger audience mentality like we know you know younger generations watch the MCU that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you're when you're like six or seven, you're most excited about the moments when the hero's out. Mm -hmm. This means mm -hmm. that they can still be excited about Steven being the main character. Yeah. Because Steven can also do the hero stuff. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. Rather than just like, oh, why are we with the, the British guy? Like, I just want Mark get, back. Get, get, get the like, Mark back. You have, every time something physical happens, you have to get Mark. Every single time. Right. And that would just like that would like the stops your story if you're doing stuff with Steven. So it makes sense. Yes. Uh so I, I really like it for that element too. Um just just everything you said. I think it I think it really works for the interpretation of of the MCU. Yeah. Um and then of course like uh just bringing it back on that, like Oscar Isaac just doing a great job. Uh in it, I wonderful. Think, 
definitely taking the material up a notch above what it already is. Oh yeah, uh, uh, all the all the actors here I think are really bringing it. Yes, like Ethan Hawke. Like this was a very Ethan Hawke centric episode, episode two, learning about his his whole mm-hmm. crew and stuff. Uh, I every episode of Moon Knight, like I really enjoy it. Then there's just something I'm like, oh, why you didn't have to do that? Um, so the problem I have with this episode two episode, uh, we meet Arthur Harrow. We meet his whole crew. We learn everything about what he's doing, his motivations, why he's doing it. So what's the motivation for the rest of the season if I know everything about this character now? If you tell me, oh, he wants to murder children in episode two, I he's a bad guy. There's no redemption for him for four more episodes. There's nothing new for me to learn that would make me feel, oh, I feel for this guy and the reasons he's doing his things. He's a child murderer from the get-go. So like, it's hard for me to sympathize with him, not that we're supposed to, but there's nothing for me to... I'm just watching him be a bad guy now. You know, like there's nothing, there's mm-hmm. no more depth for that character for me. He's a bad guy. He got wronged by Khonshu. There's nothing more that I, I feel like I can learn that would be like, oh man, that's more depth to that character. Still going to just be an evil guy. Hmm. I don't necessarily think I agree. That's fine. I, but like, um, like, I, like after episode three, I'm like, he just continues to be more evil. Okay. He's good at it, but I'm not, there's no more depth for that character for me. I don't think that I'm going to see. I don't think I mind though. Mm-hmm. Um, I get what you're, I get what you're saying. I, and I understand what you're saying. Like, I just don't think I mind that we're, that we're not, that we're just, that we're not going to learn more about, about him. It's kind of, no, that's a this terrible example. I'm not going to say the, it. The, the, the conversation that he has with Mark about like, oh, so you're going to kill children. That Steven. seems like, Steven, sorry. That seems like an episode five conversation. After uh-huh. we've spent five episodes learning about our villain, is he good? Is he bad? Is he really doing the right thing here? No, from the get go, we know he's evil. So for the rest of the season, I have no conflicts with this character whatsoever about him dying. But I already knew he was evil in the first episode. I do, but not to the extent where he's he's killing children. Like I want my villain to have a little bit of moral complication. He's just like, he's just he's just evil, and I don't find yeah. that interesting. He's I just evil, that. but but he's not he's not just evil because he's like he's still the 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 a good villain. Yes, because he has that. I believe what I'm doing. Is absolutely yes. Correct. All villains are like well, that. right? But I mean, like, but that's that's being executed well. So like, it's not. Yeah, it's 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 a bad thing. But like, it's it's not. He doesn't think it's bad, well, and course. that's such a. But that's the part that he's selling. Yeah. Right. Is that like he thinks he can have that conversation with Stephen, and Stephen's gonna agree. Yeah. How many times has he had this conversation where he's like, yeah, even children. He's like, he, when Stephen brings up children, he's like, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Actually, um, yeah, 100 children. Yeah. Uh, like. He's so on the bullshit, and um, the the part where he says, uh, "The day that that happened, Stephen, can you picture it? Heaven on earth." Yeah, and that's what's so scary about him because yeah. that's absolute mm-hmm. faith, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. and that's why I'm enjoying it because okay. Ethan Hawke's performance is like he is uh, really pulling from the cult leaders where he's not a scam artist. He truly believes this. Yeah, true. Okay. Like, that is his hundred percent. I think I'm that thinking, is the beauty. I think I'm also pulling up some three stuff into it. Where I'm just like I'm looking at the rest of his arc, and I'm like, I just don't know where it's going. Sure, yeah. that's what I mean as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, just, I, I, I don't know. I don't know entirely about how the. Sorry, real quick, Ben. I don't know entirely about how the arc will play, but like what what's what's really putting me over the moon about it is uh, is Ethan Hawke bringing the full performance of I absolutely believe everything yeah. and that's that's the scary difference it's like you have the cult leaders who are scam artists he is the cult leader who like no 1000 percent. this is the truth okay i'll give you that okay. this is the truth of the world okay yeah he's not just drinking the kool-aid he's making it and dunking his whole, his whole bloody head into it um <laughs> yeah um i actually um i kind of i'm on the opposite side i actually really like that scene and i like knowing how bad he is this early on instead of wanting to give him a redemption or just like any sort of sympathy. Cause like when he does this whole, like close little cult spiel to uh, Steven, you just get that, those vibes is like, something is really wrong here. Something's going to go bad. And he's like, and I, I also agree with Sparks. Like, he's like, yeah, he's, he's not like, I'm just doing this because I, for other motivations, other motivations, he truly does believe that Ahmed can help cleanse the world. It's a very creepy thing to think about. And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, if kids turn out to be evil, then they have to die. It's like, yeah, I don't like that part. So 
I actually really enjoy knowing how and bad he's, it is because this it gives um, emphasis to the rest of the show of we need to stop him because he's going to kill millions of people for no good reason. And he's confused why Steven is against it. Mm-hmm. Well, so I really I really like the scene where yeah. it's just like, Let me, let's just talk, Steven. Let's have that thing. I, it's one of my favorite scenes in the show um, he, when he just kind of sits there and, and, and like Spark said, he's like completely, completely sold on this idea that this is the right way to save the world. The yeah. world will be saved if this happens. And he's confused that Steven is like, no, I can't. That's horrible. Why would you do that? And he's like, well, uh, that's all. It's unfortunate, Steven. I'm, I'm, I'm sad you don't see it my way. So I think I think the arc and why they have a villain who is uh, not someone they have to play to any respects in the comics is like, OK, so this is a little like we're, we're approaching the territory you guys kind of discussed in the first episode, which is the uh, the bad version of our good guy. Mm-hmm. But sure. uh, that being said, he is the worst outcome of what Khonshu does. Yeah. And so you get. um I think this was such an interesting choice. Uh, so in episode one, the opening of the show is him putting the, the glass in the shoes mm-hmm. and stepping on them. That was actually so supposed to be the opening of episode two. Mm-hmm. They moved it to be the opening of episode one. And I'm like, what a fascinating decision that they decided we want you to, to, to feel the presence of this man's belief from the jump. Mm-hmm. And I think I do. I don't want to jump entirely to episode three, but his, I, his last line in episode three he is, forced me. Uh, I want you to know your torment secured my victory yeah, yeah and so like i think that is the thesis of of his character is Konshu taken to his maximum yeah. creates this how can mark and steven not be this uh while also, being affected by Konshu? yeah yeah, yeah. I something, think, on the, something on the side that I just want to mention real quick. It's very unsettling because you can still very slightly hear the crunching. Oh yeah, every time. Every time. Every know, time. I love it. It oh, makes yeah. me so uncomfortable. I love just because like I know there's it's like oh, I hate that. So I think, so let me rephrase it. I, I like the scene, the, the scene with him explaining everything. It just feels like that's something that shouldn't happen this early in the show. Mm-hmm. That, that's me. Cause like, I just, I just, it's just, it's, it's the same feeling and it's not, this is nowhere near the extreme, but like, it's the same feeling I got during watching Boba Fett. I'm like, this feels wrong. This is happening right now. That's the feeling I got. So like, I just feel like this is like the best scene with Haro. I think this is the best scene we're going to get with this guy. Like his full motivations, I just feel like if you're gonna get that thing, I feel like it should be closer to the end. Like it's like a full realization. But like again, we don't know how the rest of the season's gonna go. I don't like him as much in episode three, so that's probably why I'm feeling this way in episode two retrospective. Sure, I I agree. I agree with you. The idea that like this probably should be should be late, but it's later. But I'm I felt refreshed that we got this so early because I got mm-hmm. so I'm so sick of just the end the, the fifth episode of every Marvel show introducing this is actually the big bad. Yeah. I'm so sick of it. And I'm That's glad fair. that we yeah. that we got the big bad. We know what he's doing. This is what his goal is right from the jump. My worry is it's going to burn out early, though. That's my sure. worry. That's yeah. fair. Counter, counter, That's a fair worry. Yeah. Counter, counterpoint to that for me is um, I, I kind of saying like what Brandon was saying, like it, it being refreshing is yeah. that I not only do I feel like I have a at least clear understanding of where he stands with everyone else in the show, Mm -hmm. where his ideology is, which is not something I could say about, I don't know, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, (laughs) When you come to the bad guy or, or like, like Brandon brought up, like Hawkeye, not, not getting to our, our bad guy till later. Like, boy, did we want more Kingpin earlier? (laughs) Um, (laughs) So like, I, I like, I did not expect Ethan Hawke to be in as much of the show already as he has been. I've been actually very grateful to see it, that he's, that he's like, countering everything and it's consistent it is a consistent build upon build of like this dude is this Mm -hmm. this dude is this because of conchu and he is this 100 percent uh at all times it it, it is one of those things where i think you're right i think like how will i feel about the placement of that scene i think ultimately like that comes down to you know uh how how the rest of the season will play out uh if we were in a movie (laughs) then this would probably be about the right time for that because it would be relative halfway. to like, you know, halfway point. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But we're not. And so I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it hasn't, it hasn't rubbed me quite that wrong way. Yeah. Uh, as far as like placement yet. Um, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, I, I, he's, I think overall, he's just working for me in the story much more than a lot of our other Disney plus show villains have. Oh, I, I would agree with that. I would agree with yeah. that. I like watching him a lot. I'm just worried 
it's going to be all the good stuff is early. And I hope I'm wrong. Like I, I pray to God that like episodes five and six of Moon Knight are like quality, like the rest of these episodes. Right. Like I, I also just, agree. I like I, I, I would really, I would really hate it if by the end of the show, um, because like, here's the thing, Flag Smasher or whatever her name was ended up in a terrible place. But in the Carly. beginning, she was pretty compelling. Carly. Carly. Like she, in the beginning, like they were building what seemed like a compelling character and then it took a dive. Yeah. Now, they, but they never got a scene like this. They never got a scene like this is what I'm da 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 da. Um, mm, mm, they had am I that, misremembering? That was, there, that was, there was like one. That was the problem. That was the problem. It was the scene kept, where Sam goes and talks to her. They kept flip-flopping. Where like their You're right. should have changed because that scene was written to give the like, this is how I feel, this is how I feel too your fight makes sense to me. I just don't entirely agree with the way you're fighting it. Oh, wait, John Walker's going to ruin this, and then Carly's going to go off the deep end for no clear reason. Yeah. Uh, and that was the problem. But they you're did right. have this. You're right. Okay, so that's the, you're right. I, for, I, I misremembered. Um, still, but I, I, am, I am worried that we will get a similar drop-off for Ethan Hawke's character, for Haro. Um, I, I, I don't worry. think that I have... I, 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 don't, I don't, at this moment feel like we will though and I'm, i hope i'm right yeah um after episode two i would say probably not maybe episode three I, i'm starting to feel it um the 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 six hour movie thing after it doesn't episode work. three what it doesn't work i even even with the quality i after episode three i'm i i feel it i feel the stretch i'm mm -hmm. feeling the stretch even if it's good the stretch is there. I'm like, nope, this probably could have been a movie. Well, well, and and like what it is, is like they keep doing movie plots stretched over six episodes rather than just doing six episode stories. <laughs> I don't, I don't, yeah, episode three is, I, I, let's, I want to get into like whatever else we liked yeah, about there's, there's, and, and the stuff. So, Layla's here. I, so we finally get Layla. Layla's great. Uh, Layla, she's Marlene from the comics. She's, Mark Spector's wife in the comics is a blonde, a blonde ditzy lady. They just turned her into a cooler character, which is a cool Egyptian, a lady. cool Egyptian lady, which is smart. Cause like, there's no reason to just have your wife just be, I'm just a blonde lady. Blah. Like it totally makes sense. Layla's awesome. Um, I, she gets so much more stuff to do in episode three, but like episode two, the stuff with her and Mark, uh, and Steven really great, really like it. I think she's really compelling. Um, I wish we didn't have to continue to have invisible enemies, but whatever. No, I was gonna say I really love the scene when she picks up Steven and Steven's trying to convince her that he's Steven, he's not Mark, and then you can see her. I love the scene where she's like slowly understanding that, oh, this isn't the person I well, married. Honestly, I don't actually I, I don't agree with the assessment, but I all, I still like the scene. Like I, I don't I don't think that she ever does have the slow realization that that Steven is, is that Steven is a different person. Because throughout the episode, what I like is is she is so distrustful of Mark that she's just like, oh, this is a thing that you're doing to try mm -hmm. and lure me. Because she doesn't, she, like a lot of people, doesn't understand DID, so she wouldn't get that this was a different person. And mm -hmm. like she does have that moment. realization, but she does, but she doesn't slowly come to it. She comes to it very late into the episode. There, uh, yeah, there the is end. a moment like when when the Anubis monster is breaking in, and he's just on the floor crying, and she's like, okay. All right. There's something else going on here. All right. You you can't you, do this. And she calls him Steven for the first yeah. time. Yeah. She acknowledges yeah. that like you are you are something else. Something's like, happening she, here. It, I think like it's it's reasonable that she ever makes the jump to understanding that this is DID because she has no reason to believe that's what's up. He's she's yeah. never she's never had indication for he that. He never she, told her. To her perspective, this is Mark just like really being slimy being and a goofy goofball. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um about like wanting to put distance between him and her. Um, I would never divorce you. And that's one of the things where I think like it's it's actually their 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 evolving relationship is handled pretty well for the yeah. sense of her accepting more is going on with you than I understand and it's hurtful to her. Yeah, God, I like her a lot. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. it's really it, really like, realistic because like like if I came home and you just had an accent, I'd be like, what the hell are you talking? What what is going on here? Yeah. What is going mm. on here for a while until I'll be like, is something really wrong here? What's going on? Uh, like Steven's Steven's affection for her is is maybe just like it's like movie length rushed a little bit for it, me. It's and I'm like yes. like I'm like he's borderline creepily too much into her. Like he'll just kind of be into whatever lady will give him attention. <laughs> yes. Is kind of the impression we've been given by the show, and I'm like, that's okay, I guess. Um. There is something where, like, this is one of those things where, like, it's it's the DID representation that I heard being discussed, like, where people got concerned with episode two is because there's the moment where he reads 
the French poet that's her favorite. Mm -hmm. And it's his favorite. But and so some people it. are concerned that Stephen is created by Mark out of affection for Layla. Like mm. purposefully, like a manufactured personality. I don't think that's what they're doing, yeah, yeah. but I understand why people went... This is how the discussion ultimately led to the Mr. Knight thing, too, of yeah. like, I don't want this to be like him manufacturing personality as, he as says, tools. He says, though, he's had it under lock for a while. Yeah. So he, yeah. So he, but he also... Yeah, he also he also told Kanshu when Kanshu chose him that Stephen will be a problem. So yeah. Stephen has been around for a long time, perhaps his entire life. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I know. I was just acknowledging like a, a conversation beat that has been out there, and um, I, I do wonder where we're going to get like. So like, you guys didn't touch on it too much in the episode one discussion, and and it hasn't really come up since then, but like who's mom and who's he calling yeah. and like um and to what degree is that like is there something sincere because like he calls and gets postcards yeah mm -hmm. and so like is mark mom and like how much is that deception running through or is mom actually mom just not answering the voicemail or is mom mark getting the voicemail and listening to it layla and doing things for something Steven? about mark's mom right so is it mark's mom talking calling again? steven <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, there there I is an interesting that's going to land before I hope it's this not is over. Just dropped. Oh god, I if the mom's still well, sure. There is a there is a uh, a theory running on running online that I saw that the postcard looks suspiciously like the ones we see in the museum. Mm-hmm. So if that is the case, then I then I could believe that in order to kind of keep Mark and Steven separate, like Mark has tried to keep Mark is hiding in Steven when we get when we when we meet meet him in the show. Yeah. Um so he so I would believe that he is trying to keep that distance so 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 great that he's fabricated a lie for Steven to believe. Yeah. And what what why ever Whatever the reason is, involving all the stuff in the show, like, he had to put basically Steven undercover, mm -hmm. but Mark is the one undercover in Steven. And Steven's yeah. just like, I'm just living my life as a gift shop guy in an Egyptian place that's not tied to the plot of this Midnight show whatsoever. Uh, so I'm just I'm just ready for that to converge. Like, yeah. I'm just ready for everything to converge. I'm like, what? What's really going on everywhere? I just want to, I'm ready for everything to tie together. Um. <laughs> I really liked the bit when they walk into the apartment for the first time and you see Mark in the fish tank. It's mm -hmm. the first time we've seen a reflection so far away from, uh, it was the first time we see a reflection so far away from the person, not mm -hmm. looking over her shoulder, not looking directly at him. Like we just see, see it's, it's like Steven and it was Mark and Steven looking at each other through the fish tank reflection. And I thought that was a really nice, that was a really oh, yeah. good sequence. Oh, yeah. uh all of, uh, like episodes two and three have so much great reflection stuff. Whether it's whether it's through uh, uh yeah like a uh, a aquarium, knife, a mirror, a knife, uh, yeah. like a puddle, or like or like the 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 inside of a uh, what's it called the, the storage storage facility. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. great mirror shit. Like oh yeah, all the all, all, all the reflections all, yeah. throughout the series so far so good. Love it. Um, there's a there's a bit where. <laughs> Mar uh, Stephen has a like I vandal I, vand I vandalized the toilet. I like that line. I wrote that down. I thought that was funny. Um, uh, the one thing I really, I really appreciate in this episode is that we get the first sense of seeing Oscar Isaac both as Stephen and Mark. And when we see him in the in the security cameras, and you see Mark come out of the bathroom, and uh, Stephen says, "That's not me," and you can tell because the way Oscar Isaac is is kind of has kind of. Uh, shaped his face a little bit the way he 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 looks the way he the, oscar isaac is doing something interesting with this physical acting that has differentiated mark and steven in a way that you can tell which is which when he's mark he furls his brows because he looks angry all the time yeah uh and then with steven his mouth goes down <laughs> oh and he's british yeah he's he's having some fun as far as uh you guys kind of got to talk about the accent on episode one for steven um it, there's definitely like there, you know like british is more complicated than just british and so like he is trying to do a, a region but he's also doing it exaggerated mm -hmm. um which i think is to a purpose of it not being his inherent a natural accent yeah um so it is exaggerated we we get that moment in episode one where he's like london i don't know why i'm london. saying it like that yeah yeah uh uh my thing is like uh 
all I care about usually with accents is consistency, even if it's bad. Yeah. And he's yeah. been consistent with Steven. Absolutely. So that's all that really matters for me. Yeah. Yeah, because Steven would be a fake accent because Mark is generally speaking in the comics, Mark is the is the is the alpha personality. It's the one that is the one that was is is not, not real is not the right word, but it's the it's the dominant. the dominant one. No, what do they call Crazy Jane? Um uh, Oh, um Oh, I don't I don't remember. Because the uh, Jane has a specific there's like a the dominant one is closer, but there's a specific word for it. It's like the 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 main the main primary. personality, primary. the primary, right. primary. So Mark is generally the primary, and then Stephen and, and Jake would be the secondary. Yeah, much much to that point though, like um, commonly reported, like DID cases, Crazy Jane herself uh, have alters who have uh, like clear, consistent accents that they shouldn't have. That's like part of the whole thing that makes it like you shouldn't have like where DID is like, okay, so we, we do know this is a real thing because there are people who like, they have personalities that just don't track with like, you know, yeah. there's, it's the same in like the skill set of like someone who is right-handed, like has an alter that's left-handed. Or they speak a different language. Yeah. Like right. how would, brains are crazy, man. Right. Brains Instant. are crazy. Yeah. Um, the trauma, uh, uh, trauma can do and can do um, crazy things and not crazy as in like the, 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 the that, that nomenclature, but like, uh, um, wild things to the brain yeah. right uh, when it splits like that it, it can create something um, wild in episode two i really like the reveal that harrow is conchu's former avatar yeah i just Me didn't too. expect that and i thought that that does add a lot i think i would like him less honestly like if he was all the same things and it wasn't established he was the previous avatar of conchu yeah but he was doing all the same things i'd be like Neh. it's the fact that he's tied to conchu that he's like conchu is the reason i'm doing all this honestly and it's it's really good like He's like, is Conchu here? And he's like blowing stuff around. Yes. Like, you don't have to listen that's to this all, old fucking whatever. Yeah. That's all you can do. Don't worry. That's all you can do. Don't worry about it. He just blows something uh, over. Like when he's when he's holding really when he's fun. holding Steven, when he's holding Steven and and he's like, is he here? Can you hear can you hear him now? Is he telling you to kill me? It's okay, you don't have to listen to him. Crush yeah. his windpipe. Yeah. Very good. I'm I am more uh, I've grown to accept Conchu more and more as I got used to the voice. I like him now. He's cool. I really uh, like Conchu in this episode yeah. specifically. Yeah. Uh I going back to like the jackal thing so the thing about the invisible jackal thing is i just feel budget constraints so much because to me the only real advantage of an invisible jackal outside of budget is if you were still trying to play in the realm which i i didn't even think about if the show was trying to do that because i don't think any of us were on that wavelength but if the show was still trying to play in the wavelength of is this maybe not real yeah, but but but, but the quickly, show drops it very quickly with episode two with, with the jackal fight because yes. you see the security the, cam. You, well, yeah. you see you see her. Uh, to the door open. The start of episode two ke still keeps it like vague, yeah, unclear. Yeah. But you get to uh, the end and you she smashes the thing on the jackal. It has the the appearance on it. It gets smacked into cars yeah. and that actually has stuff. So it's like okay, so it is real. Yeah, uh, this is not in his mind kind of thing. Which up to that point you could have played in the space of which is confusing is it or is because it if it is real then that stuff in the security camp should have been broken uh well the, the the vase that he knocks over the doesn't the jackal knock it over right immediately after? no he jumps into yeah. the he jumps onto the wall and oh okay then yeah, no, yeah. Then that's bad yeah. okay. you just can't see the okay. jackal doing it and okay. then there we don't see inside the bathroom so we don't see what no, happens yeah, yeah, yeah. In there. okay that's fine uh, I vandalized yeah. the toilet, but they leave it. But they leave it in that vague enough space. And like, I I do like the idea because it's like it's tied to him being able to see Conchu and no yeah. one else can, and that kind of thing. And I'm like, that's that's fine and all. I just I feel the budget stuff. Like, yeah, I just don't understand why the show didn't have a better budget. It's it's, there's a, go it's just confusing. Yeah, there's a there's a th there's a scene in this in this where um in the in kind of the, the like the dinner scene where 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 by the way Ethan Hawke has this moment where he's like you're a vegan right I'm a vegan too you should try the lentil soup it's very good um like really really like like um um relating to Mark at a personal level but um he says he says to he says to 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 Stephen through Mark he like he wants can I speak to Mark can Mark hear me um because he's very understanding of this which I thought was a great a great touch um when he says that like uh, it's always going to be one other thing. It's always going to be one more thing. He says this is your like last mission because it's going to be there's going to be another one. Um, and then later in the episode, or even in towards that episode, we find out that um, Khonshu's next choice for his avatar is Layla, and that's how he's keeping Mark. 
Spicy. Because because Mark is like, I'm never going to let Khonshu take Layla, so I will always have to be Khonshu's avatar. That that is a good that is a good reason to not give up the mantle. Yeah. Like, man, like I gotta save my lady because otherwise she's gonna become like a slave to this god. But yeah, and I don't, I know what that's like, and I don't want that to happen. Yeah, that's pretty compelling. Um, yep. that's a, also a fun situation where like. I like potentially like something happens with Oscar Isaac. We'll have like we'll have Moon Knight as as Layla, just like Iron Fist as Colleen Wing. Like that's not something mm. I want to have happen. I want Moon Knight, but I'm like, oh, they put um, that in my brain. That's the that's a possibility for the future, which is cool. So there's a part in episode three where she gets called um, little scarab by the the forger, mm -hmm. and um, so uh, I've seen others suggest that she could become Scarlet Scarab. Okay, that is okay. Uh, sure, sure. Who who sure. is Scarlet Scarab? She's just like a lady, a lady, a lady in Moonlight. Just a lady. I think that they would. I think they would probably like make that role something else, something bigger. <laughs> uh, but but it, it. I don't think. Um, I don't think she should be Moon Knight. Uh, I think it's better to leave Moon Knight in this with a person who is DID representative. Oh no, no, I not. agree. I think yeah. like it's better to leave it in this place that it is. But I I would love to see her become her own kind of thing yeah, yeah. because she has like the initiative for it. So Scarlet Scarab would be. I would just be love. Cool. I just love legacy stuff. It's yeah, like, yeah, like, for you know, sure. like Oscar Isaac like does his time and then like it's my time and I die and then like Layla's got to do it. Sure, like it, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. How um, in the beginning of the episode, um, when uh, Stephen is looking for all the all the storage units and uh, what I what I really enjoy kind of the horror of that Kanshu is doing in that moment when you see like the lights turn off and he's gone and they turn off they turn on and he's gone and then they turn off. And then on, and he's there, and like he, it, it's uh, it's inconsistent and creates kind of this like looming threat that he can be anywhere. Um, I thought that was a really effective sequence. Yeah, even when you I see him outside in the in London, where and Stevens on the bus, you see him, and then it passes by a uh, like a lamppost or something, or the camera goes over from one window to the other, and he's gone in the same window. He's gone in the yeah. next window. It's like, so uh, I'm I'm glad you brought that up because like this the show had like certainly in the press but a little bit in the trailer marketing like a lot of like this is this is uh flirting more with horror than marvel's done before and so i'm mature. like yeah i guess i guess so <laughs> this like ain't, it's like this ain't it's more like, mature than anything else we've watched it's on, like it's like uh it's it's just very like standard horror fair and not only that but like both the examples you guys bring up always comes with like an undercurrent of comedy to it yep uh, both with the one on the bus where uh, when Khonshu disappears, it hits like the <laughs> like with the choir going up to make it. Oh, you think like, you you interpret that as? Oh, I'm this. Dis I disagree wholeheartedly on that. Oh, yeah, I, I, I thought that was that was hilarious. Oh, I thought that was so funny. Yeah, yeah that was totally out of tone. Interesting. Because like 100%. because like when he disappears, that doesn't it like it it feels epic in a sense, but it also feels a little silly. Yeah, and then I love the like, music. No, I love it too. I'm not knocking the music. I just thought it was it played it played comedic. entertaining, yeah, rather than scary to me. And then uh, the sequence you're talking about in the storage center ends with Mar with uh, Stephen going ah! and freeze framing before we got to him that running was outside. That's a funny beat on mm -hmm. purpose. Like it's it's just not played for the same like um, trying to scare you kind of stuff, which is fine. I just wish they hadn't like tried to tell me that it was going to be horror i wish the show had been marketed as what it is a adventure quest in egypt <laughs> like i don't know why that's not what we were selling yeah it, it, there was a disconnect i noticed when the trailers would come out and the trailers would would kind of flirt with this horror aspect of it but the the writer never mentioned horror they said there are horror elements, but it's mostly an adventure. Like he 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 often cited Indiana Jones as like an inspiration for the for the show. And I was really confused by watching the trailers. I'd be like, oh, so there are and you know, there are attempts at horror, but it's not it's not to the level that the trailers actually really made you believe. They are horror. They're just like they're they're fun, basic horror. And that's fine. Yeah. I have no problem with Goosebumps that. I just horror. I just don't need it. I don't need to be lied to in the marketing about what I'm getting. Listen, all mm -hmm. I'm saying is they said like this is th this is the same rating as like Daredevil in other countries, and I'm like, oh damn, this is gonna be a mature show. It's not. It's it's not the same. Show. Specifically, it is not the same rating as Daredevil in our country. Yes. Uh so like I I am now at the point where like I'm gonna stop thinking this is gonna be the Moon Knight show that I think it's gonna be. It's gonna be an MCU show, and I'm okay. I'm fine with that. Right. I, I'm accepted. I like it. It's good. Uh, yeah, yeah, the the rating systems in uh, in especially Europe are far more strict than ours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So you just kind of have to align to like right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is no. Yeah, I, this is no darker than like Falcon and Winter Soldier. Honestly. No. No. Honestly, like the the moment in Falcon Winter Soldier with the decapitation is the most horrifying moment in any of these MCU honestly, movies. Honestly, one hundred percent. Like that is one of the most horrifying things I've ever seen in the MCU. Yeah. Um, seeing that armor hair. One hundred percent. Seeing a bloody Captain America shield is not fun to watch. That's yeah. on. The, that's honestly on the same level. Pretty much on the same level as Fisk decapitating the guy with a car. Oh. Like it's on that level. Uh, yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, for sure. Um, now both on Disney Plus. I really, I really liked uh moon knight's last action scene in episode two which is Me where too. he's on the i i like the the whole setting him up that gets the jackals pulls oh, him on the fire, slam on pulls the, the pulls the moon orang back yeah i like yeah. he can like make moon orangs mm. from his chest that's pretty cool yeah i like that too i like making him kind of a i think it works for this show making him a supernatural because in a comic you can be like in a comic you don't need to explain a lot of like oh i've always got my i've, I've always got uh, my suit off panel that uh, i gotta get my suit oh here i come i'm oh, uh, no, uh, real, but you can't quick. do that in a show yes so, so um in the comic specifically like he he wears his mr knight outfit he wears his moon knight outfit when he has to fight ghosts he goes to fight ghosts and he punches right through a ghost and he's like okay i can't fight ghosts he goes to, and he finds an an underground buried moon knight costume that has the ability to fight ghosts so he goes on an adventure to find the suit then he comes back and he fights ghosts and Good. i'm like I guess that's sick. That's it's so sick. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, uh, I I had a question. Um, I I kind of want to bring up two things. Uh, about this show's connection to the MCU. Does it bother you guys at all that Steven's like totally? None of this could be real. This is bullshit about like Conchu or a suit. When you live in a world where Thanos blipped half the world and yeah. also it came back, like does that? rub you guys just like i like that the show is mostly like not pulling a lot of strings and being connected to the mcu there was a little bit where we're pushing just a little it did i didn't mind it at first but like we got to a point somewhere in episode two where steven was like this just can't be real you have one stake and you're just off your rocker and i'm like i mean you live in the mcu bro yes <laughs> I, I think there's a sense that i think for me there's a sense that steven looked at it as it can't be me like I, sure this could happen to somebody else but it can't be I, happening I to me that's yeah, I think it's that he's already dealing with so much. For it's me, like, how could this be happening to me? For me specifically, I think I, I now remember it's it's the moment in the storage thing where Mark says, I serve Khonshu. And he's like, Khonshu, the moon god? Oh, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. That that can't be real. No, that's yeah, stupid. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you mean that can't be real? Are you tell, doesn't, doesn't, Thor it, exists. There's a celestial in the ocean right now, my guy. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's where I was like, when he says, I serve Khonshu, and I'm like, hmm, this kind of actually just explains everything that would be happening to you. I think that's- I don't know that yeah. your reaction of like, that's impossible. I think is that's just fair. TV writing. Like, this is crazy. Like it just yeah. it that was an amount where I'm like I mean I feel like we can acknowledge the MCU a little this is a little more believable yeah there's I mean, been almost no MCU talk in this we show. get we get the GRC B uh, bus board bus board yeah, and yeah. Uh, I don't mind it I don't mind that yeah. like we're we're mostly yeah. removed um, I don't mind it I don't mind it either I I like that I like how disconnected it feels both tonally and and stylistically um, I, reference I, reference wise I like it. I continue to have a problem with how the blip is not acknowledged, but um, that's not Moon Knight's fault. That's just an MCU problem that I've realized. Realized really what I wanted is I wanted a single property after Endgame to be about the blip. Yeah. And just like have one that's about how the world has been dealing, what's been going on. And honestly, that one should have been Falcon and the Winter Soldier, like completely. Yeah. And then moved on. I didn't need everything else to do it. I just need one to do it. Never did it, so now I'm just unhappy. I think we're too late for it. Now. We are, and I'm just unhappy. Um, yeah, and I I'm agree. Be better forever. <laughs> which brings me to my point. My head canon, which I told Ryan for this show, is that Harrow, because we see that he has like he has that village in that undisclosed location from episode one that like completely is in on his shit, and he has this community in London. Mm -hmm. So he's got a lot of people in different places who are on his level, and to me, my head canon is that he didn't get blipped and he used that time to gain followers. He brought them something they could believe in at a time when they'd lost a lot of stuff. To build what he built, it, it wasn't short. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think he I, spent yeah. those five years amassing followers. That makes sense. Yeah, I think there's also a reference to the fact that Steven didn't get blipped. Mark Steven didn't get blipped either because he's got a passport that was in 2018. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I'm... I'm I'm with you, Sparks. I hope I have always been with you on this. I needed the blip to be acknowledged in Falcon Winter Soldier. Yeah. 
But um, it's, it, I, I, we just, we're never going to get it. The, the more that since that has happened, I realized I just needed one single property to like that be what the point of the story really was. It was centering on like how people are dealing post the blip yeah. and like Falcon and Winter Soldier should have been that show and it wasn't. And like n- now we're here, whatever. Um, Cause everything else since then keeps trying to be like, Oh, uh, like we'll, we'll put a poster up, but like, we really don't want to talk about it. And I'm like, it's really important that you did this. Like we kind of have to talk about Thor me. Um, is it though? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway, um, so the episode ends and it's it, real quick. It's interesting that you brought up that like it appears that Steven wasn't blip because I've also been wondering if that would be the thing that would have triggered him, his his uh, the idea, his unlock. He says I used to have it on lock and now I don't. Mm, was yeah. the, the blip in him coming back? Do you do you think how the universe works if somebody has DID? Would one of their personalities get blocked? No, no. Okay, okay. I wouldn't, no. They'll, no, they'll, not, not the multiverse thing like that. No, I know, I know, I know. But you, but yesterday I had a, I had a similar conversation with Cookie about a different show and I do not want to go down that rabbit hole again. Well, that's a different show. That's a Star <laughs> Trek. This isn't Star Trek. Oh man, it's weird. How, it's weird that I just had like this flashback. No, of, like, is, no not no, again. No, but like for real, like. If Steven got blipped and he came back and then like he's just back right, in his Steven body. Steven was blipped for five years like, and then came back. If yeah. he's technically a person but in a different body, I mean like that is a scenario I could see. He had it on lock because he was gone. Ooh. I think that's the thing where like DID representation gets the most touchy is like is the personality its own person its yeah. own person yeah. or is the personality still a part of the whole of the primary? Because it's also and, like, like those things are not always consistent certainly in media. Because we're dealing with a real life situation but also science fiction. Yes. So, yeah. like, it's it's where where are you gonna right. be on that line? I, I, I have one, I I have one more thing. If you did get blip, I had one more thing I wanted to, I wanted to touch on about the 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 Conchu thing. I think that there is still a um. I think in the MCU we're just going to have to kind of come to the point where we accept whether or not whether or not it's a good thing or not is a different discussion. Yeah. But there, every time they introduce a new a new element, an eternal a. Uh, Egyptian god, a uh, uh, Greek god, whatever. There's Legendary. going to, there's going to need to be a sense of disbelief because I think, as far as MCU writers go, and I'm not sure I even agree, but as far as the writers that are kind of controlling the MCU, is that you've got this thing, and it's like this is, this is the step too far. This is the st- I, I I believe this. I've seen this. I got this, but this is the step too far. I look. I remember. Pacific Rim has has this mentality that has this mentality and I, that I think is is completely different now. But back then, certainly, it was this case that the Jaegers had to come from the same not the same place, but the same general specific idea of, of the kaiju. Uh, because the Jaegers build from the kaiju, or else the audience can't just buy that. Oh yeah, there's giant monsters and there's giant robots. Don't worry about it. Um, nowadays, that's not necessarily the case. But I do wonder if the MCU is still operating on that case of like there will always need to be a certain disbelief from people whenever a new thing is introduced. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting that you specifically brought up Eternals because I think Eternals <laughs> has the perfect example oh, of that. Screw this. Which is Jon Snow's character in uh, uh, Eternals who's in, in love with um, Cersei. Cersei. And he's already suspicious she is a superhero. <laughs> and then when she does super stuff, he's like, Okay, so like, why didn't you guys like help fight Thanos? Like, what's up with that? He just immediately rolls with it because he acknowledges he lives in a world where Thanos did what he did. Sure, it is right though because like, if it, it is it is a disconnect from from like entertainment itself because if you have a new movie with a new bad guy, be like, we've seen this guy a thousand different times. I'm not scared of this guy. Then you have no story, right? Like, you mm-hmm. have to be scared of the new thing. So that is something. That is that is an interesting thing they're going to come up against. Like you keep introducing new gods, new deities, new celestials, new like the next best thing. Like, like are you always just going to be scared of it? Like I've dealt. Yeah. With are this. you always are you always going to get to the point where when when a new thing is introduced, how many times can you be like, and this thing is can't be real? Like yeah, if Galactus yeah. shows up in the sky, are people going to be like, I don't believe that Galactus is real, but you saw an Eternal in the sky. What was the? Yeah. yeah really. Yeah. I there's, think the difference, like, like I think right the difference earlier, is, there's a celestial out and sticking out of the ocean right now. I think the difference is disbelief and fear. Yeah. It's okay to be afraid. Yeah. It's the disbelief that I'm like, you can't no, be, you gotta believe you that gotta this believe can happen. It. Half of y'all died. <laughs> right. You gotta believe that this can happen. You can still be afraid of it just yeah, because yeah. it's a new thing uh, on top of all the other things that have happened in the MCU doesn't mean that it can't be a threat. But 
the disbelief is, yes. the, so th is the issue. That's the thing. Instead of changing the line of, I can't believe this, going, oh my God, not again. <laughs> that's what it is. Go, I can't believe this. Like, no, nah, man, we live in the MCU. Like, it's a Tuesday. <laughs> I, I do think I do think that for me, the way I still even saw the disbelief, even when he, when he says Khonshu can't be possible, it is the the disbelief that this could not be happening to Steven. Um, but I... I that could just be me rationalizing it in my head um, than anything else. So mm -hmm. I just think there's an amount where we, this, it, it's not a huge sticking point of like a problem in the show. I, I, I think that they handle it. But just, we should live in the universe we made. I, but I think we should live in the universe we live in. Yeah. And like, uh, I, I think at a certain point you have to make it so that the characters can roll with the circumstances that are given to them. Again, Etern Yowch. Eternals are a good example of that. Um, so is uh, another one that that recently happened in the MCU, but I had it earlier, but it's gone now. Um, but like that, that characters can kind of go, yeah, all right, um, this is a thing, mm -hmm. but they can still be intimidated or afraid of it. Yeah. And that those things are not necessarily... Uh, inconsistent from each other all right yeah. so so mark, Episode two's real mark beats up an anubis monster uh and he's got to go to egypt he's got to find that tomb of omit oh let's uh, move the scarabs to... they're not the power of moon knight's costume thank god i was really worried about that it's not the case they're just they're just a, a compass thank god but there's only one scarab and it's a compass mm -hmm. thank god um yeah so let's move on to episode three the friendly type Layla got to get a fake passport from her e from her criminal mom i love it it's nice i really uh, like that scene Nice little scene, yeah. Fun yeah. fact, as you brought her up, her name, the actress, is Barbara Rosenblatt, and I only bring that up because she is a uh, rather uh, famous audiobook narrator for books about Egyptian gods and books that are like uh, fiction that are based around like uh, like Egyptian crime mysteries and it. things like that. Um, she's rather well. It's known really for cool it. that this that this show, um, even though the main character is not Egyptian but it's based in the Egyptian mythology. It can have an Egyptian creative team. It could be filmed actually in Egypt and stuff in Cairo. And like, thank God it's not just on some soundstage with like a, with like a, like a yellow tint. Like it's, this is, I've never truly like, and I, people have been saying this all over Twitter, but like, I've never seen Cairo, Egypt look like this in a TV show. Oh, this was the, one of my favorite things. Like for real, it looks like a, yeah. like, I like, it's so shitty that Hollywood makes it think like, oh, it's like a third world country. Like it's just a city. It's a city. Like any other city. You're yeah, so, there's you're a, so right. It was one of my favorite things about episode three is that I'm like, this feels like the most modern interpretation of uh, anything close to Egypt I've seen yeah. that isn't Dubai. Yeah. The thing that was always so egregious for me in the last couple of years when I've actually noticed it, isn't necessarily, as you, as you mentioned, Ryan, that these these like uh, other countries are filmed on a soundstage. They're not. They're filmed in those countries. And, or the tint. And they, but they tint them with this yellow color. And they do this to be to create the sense of like warmth and heat like it comes from a place of like we need to we need to convey this a sense that this place is hot this place is very is very warm because it's in the middle east or whatever and it, it just kind of comes off very bad um and the fact that we get we came to each this is why this is why moon knight right now is my favorite shot of the mcu films of the mcu shows because there's no gray haze there's no digital gray haze it feels very much the cinematography feels very real <laughs> whenever we go to a different city it feels like it's it the the color grading the color grading feels like the colors of that city it doesn't feel artificial you're, it feels real you're so right um moon knight overall is one of the best shot of the disney plus shows by far yeah, yeah. um i think wandavision being the only one even kind of close to arguing it because of how well they recreated like the the television sitcoms that they were hearkening back to they did a great job like mimicking that but like this one going back to like the reflections are so well thought out mm -hmm. like I, I mean like absolutely truly some of those things that they have to come up with how they're going to film the reflections like so much thought goes into all of those yeah and just in general what you're saying like how well they shot it the the respect they have for the color grading of it and it's the is, type is of very very good it's a type of thing where i think i think having a lower budget despite it being like a cgi character the lower budget's helping the show because it allows mm -hmm. them to just be like filmmakers instead of the Marvel CGI train that it normally is. Right. Because you're actually, these are a lot of these scenes are just, it's shot like a TV show, which is really, just really nice. It's just really nice. Yeah. There's a, there's a sense that we talk, we talk a lot about like, you know, Shang-Chi is, is a, is a good kicking, is a, is, is a good, um, uh, uh, Twitter, uh, uh, Twitter scapegoat um, recently when it talks about like how great it looks, how great the final battle looks, um, things like that. Um, in 
one of the things that I, you know, I agree. I, I also dislike the uh, how gray a lot of a lot of the MCU films look, especially when it comes to the more CGI heavy elements. But there is there is a sense of of this kind of they call it they call it digital haze. And I don't necessarily think that's the right thing to say, but it does feel like a, a film, a, a film shot on digital from the early 2000s, that there is a there is a sense of like this, this kind of gray tone because those digital cameras couldn't couldn't. Uh, bring in the color as well as a film camera could that's no longer the case so it is very strange that they do it that they do it that way um but this show does not feel like i understand i'm sure it's shot on digital but it feels like it is shot on 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 uh it, it is not color graded to have that kind of gray tone a kind of scaled back color there's this scene that i really like where there, it's just Layla and Mark in the boat and it, they've got these like purple blue colors all around yeah. them and it's very beautiful oh, yeah. I really just I, I was very appreciative of the show that there was just like, by the way, there's still color in this world, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> and uh, also, again, another great modern representation of Egypt that they have yeah. like both where they're having like rave parties on. Oh, that was so sweet. Like the family just having a ball. Like, back like there, just yeah. really nice that that kind of thing is represented and exists. Like uh, that's just not an interpretation you generally yeah. get. Like it's all very yeah. like lumped in. Third world countries look a very specific way, and this is how we visualize them in America. Uh, Yay. Yeah, talking about that boat scene, uh, the acting episode three is still great, still incredible. Ben's falling asleep on us on the spot. Um, that scene, Ben, your eyes were closed. Uh, that scene where Mark, where, where Layla is like, You could have talked to me. And he's like, I couldn't have. Like, and he's like, He says a line specifically, he's like, uh, Does it matter? And he breaks as he says it. Cause he's like, He's already put Layla through so much, and he's going through so much as it is. Like, he doesn't want to do more to this lady that he obviously loves uh it's so good oscar isaac is so good um can you find the actress's name for me her name's maya something who plays layla uh this is like her first big like break in hollywood uh which is really great um i just think like their chemistry is really good uh i hope she doesn't get murdered <laughs> i yeah one of the things that the the mcu does uh, are well, is our may, side characters may uh kalamawi yeah may kalamawi she's egyptian she's fantastic yeah, she, she's great. I love her. I love that character. The the scene in the beginning is one of my favorites. Um, just her. Um, it's just <laughs> it's so weird to say this, but it feels like a scene. There is a there is a motivation to the scene. They have they have a goal. They're we are learning things about Layla. We are learning things about this about this other character. And the dialogue feels natural. It's moving. There's some momentum to it. It's a good scene. It's a very well shot scene. It's a very well acted scene. Um, and and it and it ends with a. With a with them completing their goal, which is making the passport, I was like, "This is simple and well like, done." We don't yes. we don't know the the details, but Layla isn't liked in Cairo for some reason. She's yeah. going back to a place that she does not want that she doesn't want to be, and other people don't want her to be there. So that's interesting. Uh, I hope we get more into that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just like like I get it is weird to talk like it is just it is weird to think like it's just a scene where two people yeah. just talking, but like in the MCU, sometimes it just feels like that just never happens. Like we're just things can happen and like you can just throw away that scene it's nice nice little scene also, um, yeah. her mom i really enjoy but also how like she's taking her for fake passport photos and she's like smiling and then she's going back into her rant mm-hmm. about mark and everything i don't know i just like that it's a that it's good. a good well shot well acted scene i was actually really impressed yeah. yeah yeah that and then the the growing implication throughout the episode that mark killed her dad yes yeah. i'm i'm still conflicted on this one too yeah because we got all of this information in this episode and then we're immediately like, guess what? Mark killed your dad. Do you feel bad about it? Audience, are you mad at Mark about this? I'm like, I don't even know. I barely know who this dad is and Layla. Like, I wonder if his, I wonder, I wonder if her, it's not that. Okay, so in, in Moon Knight, if I recall, there is some, there is some version of his, of his story where he is betrayed in the desert. And that's what ends up getting him killed and and, intro- and introduced to Khonshu? Yes, Bush Bushman, who is his arch nemesis. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if perhaps that is not going to be Bushman. It'll be it'll her be dad. Layla's dad. Interesting. Yes, because the the, the creators of the show. Uh, real quick, Bushman uh, is his arch nemesis in the comics. He is not in the show whatsoever. The creators have already said that. Uh, that really tripped me out because Moon Knight doesn't have that many great villains but bushman mm-hmm. is like the guy so the fact that he's not in this kind of like if you have one shot to do moon knight why wouldn't you do it so if they're gonna do something with that that makes sense we're we only have three episodes left you need to you need to do more to establish this for me to care is what I'm, is so all i want i wonder if we're going i wonder 
I think we're seeing a flashback to when he was chosen by, by Khonshu. We've seen it in the trailers, or yeah. we think we've seen it in the trailers. Um, and I, I wonder if it's going to be revealed that uh, Layla's dad betrayed betrayed Mark, and Mark got revenge when he became Moon Knight. Interesting, yeah. I I guess I, I'm okay with that. I think I just, I need... I need more real estate. I need, mm-hmm. I like, I need to see more. If that just happens in one scene, I, it's not, it's not going to be enough for me to care. Mm-hmm. I need more for me to establish like the relationship between all of those characters for me to care about the death. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think, I think based on the end of episode three, we're primed for some like Layla, Mark Stephen exploration stuff. Yeah. That seems yeah, like so too. the next episode is primed to do that. I thought episode two going to three it was going to be a different episode. I didn't expect any Arthur Harrow in the third episode whatsoever. So like, right, I, don't, I, I don't even know what the next episode would be, to be honest. I, I will say, like, I think this is a good time to bring up that, like, um, the whole side mission to Midnight Man. The the lead up to it is good Layla Mark stuff, and the aftermath of it is good Layla the Mark stuff. The sarcophagus stuff. But, like, while we're there, yeah. it's it feels like a time when we should be fleshing out more about those two, and we're really kind of not. Um, so this is the, yeah, this is the first scene or it's more than a scene it's like a whole thing this is the first part of the whole chunk of the episode i just it just didn't really work for me uh like uh no respect uh uh, no disrespect to the actor who passed away but like that dude is just like a dude in a robe and he's just like swarmy and like that scene felt like it could have been cut or changed and like nothing really would be different arthur harrow just shows up and I'm still confused by that. He just shows up and he's like, "Let me. I want this thing." I'm like, "How did you get here? What, why are you here? You don't need to be here." There uh, is a there is a sense that this this bit, this chunk, is only to get the star map, and you probably could have done it in a different way that might have been a little bit more compelling. Yeah. Right, I agree. Like that's the whole thing is that it just it doesn't feel very interesting unfortunately the the now deceased actor who plays midnight man and then and then just everything around this is kind of like the only like things that stand out to me from this are when harrow does show up and he presents the information that sends layla onto the thought path of mark hiding something from her which again more surmising is he just like shows up and just reveals his information out of nowhere for no reason right it's just Um, like so confusing to me and and offers midnight man like power uh, and and it's not clear for what purpose that really. Why does he need that? He's already at the tomb. Yeah. At this point, mm-hmm. like I don't get, I don't get this uh, at all. Um, I I agree with Ryan. I don't get why Harrow's there. I don't get how this helps him. And the- this is the part of the episode where Harrow's appearance, like, really, like, just throws me, and I don't follow it. And it everything here just doesn't feel like it really informs on any of the characters in a way that's needed or or helpful. The only other part I like is when Steven takes over the body. And so it's Mr. Knight. And he's like, all right, let's all just calm down. And he gets stabbed. And he's like, take, take it back, body, take it back, take, take back, the body back. back. Yeah. He's like, just chill the F out, stab. He's like, take it back. That's, take that's, that's, it, then- that's, another, that's another thing that I really like. About, that's another kind of hint of like, I really like how this episode is edited. Because when it, it, it cuts to he's Moon Knight and then he's Mr. Knight. I thought that's a really good, that's a really good edit. Yeah. But, but then other than that, like this whole, this whole side venture just, does so little for me. I find it dull. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and um, the thing is, like, real quick, like, the character, I forget, like, the, the, the actual character's name, but he's Midnight Man in the comics. He, he's, a, he's like a C-list villain. He's like an evil Moon Knight who steals stuff, right? They could have done literally anything with this character, and I just think the direction they chose was utterly boring. He's just mm-hmm. a rich dude in a robe who who buys stuff for his own, for his own means. Like, I'm, that is so boring <laughs> to me. Like, I was so disinterested in this. So I haven't read a whole lot of Min, uh, Midnight Man, Moon Knight, and I don't know who Midnight Man. I, I don't know who Midnight Man is. If you did not just tell me that that guy was going to be a, a prevalent character in the comic books, I wouldn't have known. I thought he was just some random rich dude who had the thing that they need, and it's like here you go on the way to the MacGuffin. It's like a, another pit stop to get on the way to the MacGuffin, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't have cared all that much. Now it's like, oh yeah, this guy's supposed to be Midnight Man. It's like. Well, they kind of screwed him over then. Well, I live in, like, again, I don't care about, like, them not making him Midnight Man. That's not the point. It's they chose this character and they did literally nothing with him. Yeah, That's exactly. Like, I, I thought there was anything to make him interesting. He was just a rich, boring dude. Yeah, he's just a rich dude who's like, I have a sarcophagi that you guys need to look at. I yeah. agree with everything you're saying. But I have a positive in this scene. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually have two positives. I really enjoy the scene where um, Mark and Steven are talking to each other and in, 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 in the sarcophagus when he's trying to figure out the thing he's and Steven praying. 
Yeah, and Stephen is and Stephen is uh, talking Mark through it. I think that's a good. I think that's a good scene. Um, and I also very much appreciate that. What I a, a fear that I was starting to have in this show was that we weren't going to see Mark fight people. We were only going to see him fight CGI monsters. Yes, I was scared about that too. And I was very happy that at the start of this episode, that is not the case. And then in this episode, and then in this scene, he fights. He fights people. And I think it's well choreographed. I think it's well done. Um, CGI cape scene, whatever. But like, I, I like, like there, there's a, there's a shot that I really like, but by the way, when he turn, he like glides in the, in the moon shaped cape. That's cool. I love that too. Um, so I'm really happy that we actually got to see Mark fight people. And I yeah. thought it was a really well done fight scene. I agree. I, I agree with those positives. My, my overall problem is that like the narrative of this whole chunk just doesn't help or yeah. serve anything. It feels like, it feels like bullshit in a six episode series that shouldn't have bullshit narrative. Mm. It's, it's like, the, it's, it's like if we're doing an Indiana Jones adventure, like we just watch Sonic too. There's an adventure. You got to go find a thing. Like all these things have a thing. You got to go find the thing, make it interesting. This make scene, it, make it fun. This like scene, the action scenes are fine, but it's still 20 minutes in between all that stuff of a boring dude. It just, mm -hmm. it just needed more clear writing again. Like I agree with Ryan. This is, this is the one appearance of Harrow for me. That's like, what the fudge is going on here? Like, why is he here? How is this relevant? Why are we doing this? Um, I think he hurts the scene by his appearance more than helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I don't want to, I don't want to, I want to move on to other things, but like, um, I, I watched it again and it was pointed out that like, when uh, our, the, the actor is now deceased is Midnight Man is riding towards him and he slides aside and catches Layla. And then he throws a thing into his back while he's riding off. He's riding off into a mist that wasn't there before. Uh, it, it might be a different actor. He gets thrown the knife and it's like an ADR. Ugh! And it's, so it's like, did they just like kill him off because they knew they weren't going to use him now because the actor had passed away. So that's, that, that almost it's, felt worse than just like letting him ride away. Here's the thing. Yes. Because it's shitty. It's shitty of Moon Knight. Uh, because this isn't Jake Lockley doing this. This is Moon Knight, right? So the dude's riding off defeated. He throws something into his back. How sh that is so, that is, that is very not a cool thing to do in battle. That dude's running away. Come on. Come on. That seems like a way of it's like, we have to kill this guy so you know he's not going to come back because unfortunately the actor passed. Because otherwise it's like, he just wrote off. And yeah. like, I wouldn't have thought about it whatsoever. Right. It feels like something that was changed in post. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about some positives though about this episode. <laughs> if that's okay. No. Um, so oh, no, let's, damn it. Uh, let's, let's talk about some more negatives. Um, definitely <laughs> the part in the beginning where the kid... No, go ahead. Uh, no, I, I, I want to talk about um, one thing that's interesting to me. So, Brian, you brought up Jake Lockley. So we get our first hints that Jake Lockley is here um, in this episode. And I found that very interesting because Mark doesn't know who that is. He doesn't yeah. know that he has a third personality inside of him. That's fantastic. This is this is the thing that is going to keep me watching the show for like I, I was going to watch it, obviously. But like. So Mark Spector is a murderer he's a bad guy but in this in this show he is like okay i only kill when i have to right mm -hmm. like that's the type of guy i am jake lockley is the wild card that i wanted him to be he's just murdering fools without you knowing it that is so spooky and scary i am so ready for it uh steven's like it wasn't me i swear i like, love that i love yeah. that when he's like oh, yeah. steven what did you do it wasn't me yeah. uh so so because I, I saw that scene and i was like wait mark doesn't know about jake oh my god he's a wild card so uh, Jake's the dude who asked that girl out, 100%, 100%. He's the one yeah. who got that other goldfish. He's like, I'm not having a goldfish with one fin. Get out of here. Uh, Jake is able to just somehow pop in and out when he feels like it, I guess. Uh, we're going to find out in the next couple episodes. Uh, that is what's like, truly exciting. I think we see Jake wake up in the next episode. Man, I don't... I, 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 I suspect that too. I, I hope so. That'd be because, great. Because, so what... what what I think prompted Jake to come out was, was getting knocked out, right? Because like, whenever we see that Steven, when, when Mark takes over, Steven goes to sleep. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's what, when we, that's the implication that we get. There's always kind of this, like, they, they are both, they, they both know when each other are going to take over. Or at least Mark knows when to take over. And I think that there's an implication being done here. And I could be completely wrong. Just basically, this is just me talking about like context clues within this, within this show so far because he was knocked out because because uh they were knocked out so it knocked out both steven and mark mm -hmm. that way so jake took over and i think that's what happened now at the end of this episode is that both steven and mark were knocked out so jake will wake up sure 
Yeah. I, I still agree with Ryan that I'm, I'm pretty confident Jake's the one who asked out the lady at the museum. 100%. I think so too. Probably. Oh, also, yeah. because Jake didn't remember Stevie's name, he, he said my name's Scotty to the security guard. Oh, yeah, that'd be funny. Yeah. So, because yeah. like, he's like, my name's not Scotty. He's like, well, that's what Jake told him. Uh, yeah. I hope, God, I hope that's true. That's going to be so good. Yeah. I, I, I was very intrigued by that, and I was happy that's how they did that. Yeah. The, there is one thing I want another positive I really want to talk about. So obviously, like the first two episodes, or mostly the first episode, we see the whole thing go through Steven's perspective when he gets knocked, when he blacks out, he wakes up again, and stuff's going on. Mm-hmm. So all Mark's happening. In this one, I really enjoy seeing Mark's perspective, and then the times he blacks out, and because yes. for a split second I thought, oh damn, Steven stabbed a dude, and then when Steven says it wasn't me, it's like, oh, okay, you got me interested again. Let's go. I like it's this. definitely it's definitely like it perks you up you're like uh yeah and because yeah. if you don't know about jake lockley you're like well who who is that and if you do know you're like oh shit, he's he's coming baby yeah. <laughs> that mustache man's coming yeah i really i really do like following mark for this episode that's me too really yeah. nice yeah um the only scene of this whole episode i wasn't my favorite was the the trial scene only because i didn't like the way oh. oscar isaac portrayed conchu's voice i don't know why it just it, i didn't like it i can't that, give you any real <laughs> I don't know why. It's just like the way he was trying to do Conchu. It's like, I, I don't know. I felt like I, he was I, trying too hard. It was. I, I feel you, Ben. I think that is one that's just like, that's a personal thing. Like, I think. No, no, this is. I wholly yeah. agree. Brandon's walking away because he probably walking away. Like, oh, no, he's he didn't too like offended. It. No, um, this is totally a personal thing. This is just on. This is 100% on me. Yeah, yeah. I just did not like it as much. However, if everyone else loved it, that is awesome. I am not trying to take away your enjoyment of that scene. Just for some reason, when Oscar Isaac was like, he has no trial. It's like, just the way he was talking is like, you are really trying to oversell this dude. I did I not. Will, I will say it's interesting that Khonshu is like yelling the entire time. Yeah. Like, I will give you that. Like, I, I don't have a problem with it because like I find it more like funny than than like than like bad. But uh, I think Khonshu is just in such a mood. He's like, he's just yelling so like it's it might be a little weird i think it's also it's also like no matter how much he was told like just just let it happen mark's oh mark, mark's it. fighting it so you can see it in his body yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah which i think is good portrayal by oscar isaac so yeah. like um i think that's there uh yeah. I, I Brandon, are you afraid because i i definitely implied that i was not happy with the trial scene yeah yeah sorry Brandon. sorry bud <laughs> I Definitely really liked happened, it. But... Listen, uh, uh, the implications, uh, the 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 idea of it, fantastic. I love, I love bringing in a pantheon of, of gods. I am 100% on board. The execution and everything said, I'm like, why did we do this? I'm tired of being scared of liking something. So if you don't mind, I want to say my positives before you yeah. guys rip it to shreds. Not gonna rip um, it to shreds, dude. Just being I, I really like this scene. Um, it's in my top five of the season so far. Um, for sure. I really like the implication of like these other avatars and they're, they're uh, being taken over by their, by their gods. Um, I love how it's acted. Uh, I think Oscar Isaac, um, uh, resisting Khonshu's takeover of his body um, is well done. And, and Haro, uh, Haro has this thing that I really love where it was just like, where it was just like, um, when he sees the moon and he said he sees the, the 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 eclipse and he's like you're getting desperate old you old bird and he's like keep digging i'm about to be summoned because he knows what's about to happen and he, he goes he goes into that pyramid with a plan he's like uh it, because he's so he's so he's so able to smarm his way through this trial that i th- i that i think it, it he's he he's able to convince them that like, I was just in the desert. Like just, is it, is it the thing? Is it bad to be in a desert? And, and Khonshu is getting very frustrated because he's like, this is, this can't be how this is working because Khonshu is already not in favor with the gods. And so, so he has a, he has a much harder uh, battle to fight in this trial than, than, than Haro does. So Haro is just kind of, he knows that. So he's able to play with, he's able to play with the gods expectations of what's happening. Yeah. I, I don't know if I can't say anything else, and I'm certainly not trying to convince you guys, but I really liked the scene. You don't I thought it was convince, very like, good. The thing is, like, I don't have a problem with, like... Everything you said, Brandon, I like. Mm-hmm. You just didn't say the things I disliked, that's all. Like, everything you said is true. <laughs> yeah, the problem, the problem for me is that I don't... I'm not okay with the fact that the gods do no further inspection on Harrow. 
at at all. And I'm also not okay with the fact that Kanchu brings no evidence. He just says it. He, this is not a good he trial. He has a line. He has yeah. a line right before where he says, "Are uh, the gods banished me last time I was here?" So um, we got to have like an indisputable case against Harrow. And when he gets in there, his case is he's doing it and he's lying about it. And that's it. And he's just shouting at them that. And I'm like, bro, like tell him to find the scarab. See if the Mark's, scarab is Mark, on him. Like, I don't my, know. Again, my, Give me something. My problem with the scene is like, I, I, I love the scene itself. It's everything that like the scene does. I have a problem with because Mark gives absolutely no case for himself whatsoever. Every line he says has it's like he's doing a bad thing, and then Harold's like, "No, I'm not. He's he's crazy. I'm right." And like, there's the gods do no introspection. They do no research. Like they could, oh, Harold, what are you doing in the desert? Let's go take a look real quick. You're digging out a temple for Amit. You can clearly see that if you just use your eyeballs. You don't even have to be a god. You just need to be a human being with eyeballs. They don't even they don't even do their due diligence. They're just like, oh, I guess I guess he's not evil right in front of me. Yes, he's good. Yes, and, he's all right. And the thing is, like, all the fundamental ideas of what you were saying about, like, how Harrow is playing, like, the fact that they don't like Conchu against him and all that, I think all that could have been done. I just don't think it's very well written. There's, like, a gap in the writing of, of the clear line for the gods to just not investigate him whatsoever. Um, I don't like that when they free Mark Spector... Uh, so that he can say something. He's like, this has nothing to do with my feelings. This is a, I'm not the one on trial. He is, he's the one who's uh, doing this and he kind of falters. And then Osiris is just like, he's committed no offense. This matter's closed. Okay, everybody leave. And I'm like, what? We're just, we we let Mark talk, but we're not going to listen to Mark. What is this? Um, so that's where I wish that Harrow had been better written to play m knowing that Mark and Steven are complex against them to trip them up more so the gods wouldn't even have a reason to want to yes. investigate Harold. And I, I just don't think it's well written enough to do that. I, I love, I am all for Harold gaslighting the gods against Mark. I am all for that. I don't think they, I don't think he, I don't think anybody's written well enough to do any of their jobs properly. Mm -hmm. The gods, Mark, Harold, I think. I, it, it feels just like a bunk scene. Cause like, and then Harold comes back later and that's so confusing. We'll get to that. Yeah. I don't want to talk about that yet. <laughs> Uh, again, like I love the scene, and I the 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 bigger scope of introducing the pantheon of gods, the Aeneid, the Aeneid, which means like you know we're introducing the Egyptian gods. Who knows where other gods are going to show up in the future? We have the god butcher showing up soon. All that stuff is really really cool and really cool to implement impl implicate. But like the scene itself, I'm just like Mark didn't even try. The gods don't Contra even try. Contra didn't try. Uh, it's just like we had to have the scene of Mar of of Harold getting away, uh, but we're not going to try at all. I would have loved to have seen an actual like not like a like a thirty minute trial scene like like Law and Order, but just something, just something a little bit. Would have been Egyptian Law and Order Egyptian gods. <laughs> raw, raw. I like the setting <laughs> in all the avatars though. Yeah, again, all everything oh. like involving the scene is great. Like, and I'm glad I watched it still. But this like and everybody's performances are killing it. Like, I have nothing against the performance. Yeah, like just hear, hearing Stephen on the reflection, he's like him get, geeking out going into the Pyramid of Giza. That's like, yeah, if I was ever allowed inside one of the Great Pyramids, I would probably freak the F out too. That'd be that, great. That little girl said there was nothing in there. That little liar. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, there's a, yeah. a thing in this in the scene where, oh shit. I should have written it down. Oh. I had it. It's gone. I believe it. Oh well. I'm sure I'll remember anyway, it later. I, you kind of see where we're coming from on that, I guess. I do. I don't agree though. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Yeah. It just it I just felt like why didn't they do the bare minimum? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, like what was even the point? Um what happens after that? I don't even remember. Uh we get them going to that's when they uh have to go do the thing with the midnight man and all that. Because oh, she's that, that, because, that whole yeah. Because she's told that oh, the overvoid stuff. I really I, I thought it was a really cool idea that like uh the reason why Khonshu is still on Earth is because he was banished from the overvoid. And yes. so, like all, all the other all the other gods are talking through their avatars from this ethereal plane that they have they have um, ran to after after humans after humans said we don't believe in you anymore. Uh, and Khonshu is still yeah. and so and Khonshu is still there. Well, I mean, if the gods are this bad at judging, I can see why people decided to leave them behind. Uh, so, I'm glad you brought that up because so we get the the Ennead and um, they seem to be mostly accurate. 
he was doing some real ass research. I I went back and I looked at all the statues, and so um so the Ennead is Osiris, Isis, Horus, uh, Tefnut. Uh, they're all there, uh, actually with their avatars in this one. Um, mm-hmm. but then Hathor is there, and Hathor's not uh one of the Ennead. Um, mm-hmm. she appears to be either replacing Nut or Jeb. It's not very clear which. Uh, I had a hard time with one of the statues, so I couldn't figure it out. But we do see the statues for uh, Shu and for uh, Neftis and Atom. Uh, all three of them are there. Their statues are there, but their avatars are not. Uh, maybe Gore got them. Or maybe they're they're in stone. Could be. Yeah. That's the thing. Is like uh, When Hera walks in, there's a whole platform of the stone gods Mm -hmm. uh when we get to the end he says like as many before him have been turned into the stone statue so like they do this all the time um so there's a whole platform of the gods they've done this to uh i'd be it'd be weird i mean i don't know like what they're doing but it'd be i'd be surprised if all three of the ennead because they are the ennead were turned to stone that just Mm -hmm. seems like uh a bit of a dramatic step um hathor is uh is a sky deity she's um responsible for like consorting the relationship with ra uh but she's also like love and and music Music. and all that is tied to her because of her sky relationship of love with ra she banged kashu Um, so uh, i it i see why they decided to to put her in she stands in for nut pretty well because nut is also a sky deity so i assume that's the one that she's standing in for but again like i can't tell if that's nut or jeb on one statue on the far and it's not clear to me. Um, uh, I I only wanted to do all this because uh, there were a lot of people and like it, it wasn't clear, like was Khonshu one of the Ennead? And uh, a lot of people have been running with that idea. And I'm like, Khonshu's statue is definitely not there. Neither is Amit's, neither of them are part of the Ennead. Yeah. Um, I was just surprised that we only got five considering Steven brought up that there were nine, but all their statues are there. So like, uh, It'd be cool if, like, the the answer is like, yeah, Gore's getting to him, mm-hmm. um, and that's one of the reasons why they're like, uh, don't even want to mess with stuff from the Overvoid. Well, that that uh, I'm yeah. just glad that they did the work to like pick who's there, and it does seem like most of them are pretty much the classic, uh, the Ennead again with the replacement of Hawthor. And that's it very, is cool. very cool. Yeah, it is. It is really neat that like you know we've got we got the North Norse pantheon like almost a decade ago at this point, and now <laughs> we're like, here's the Egyptian ones. And then we'll yeah, see so, the big ones get killed next movie. It's so interesting that like outside of the Norse ones, because the Norse gods are basically aliens in the MCU, um, but everyone else is they are these ethereal beings. And so like every single god that we've seen since the Norse ones have just been ethereal beings, like gods yeah, as like, we recognize them. We aren't entirely sure like what what the the MCU Egyptian gods are. Like they are probably like, you know, like like uh like primordial entities because from, like you because know. of small Amit. g son because small of Amit's yeah. powers uh happening i feel like like if you broke it down they are interdimensional beings that's yeah that's what i mean yeah uh mm-hmm. it, some people have been throwing around like like Amit's when he's calling Amit's power it looks like the dark dimension um mm. i could buy that like they, they just are exist the overvoid is just essentially another dimension yeah um, Yeah. and that's how they exist and and like they're able to uh interact with the mortal plane um it's going to be really interesting if this ever does it it might not happen in the show i don't expect it to but if we ever get acknowledgement of like how bast fits into all this because bast is also uh egyptian in in the marvel comics mythology bast is one of the og ennead that's not true at all in egyptian mythology but it is in in the the mcu like bast and Khonshu are like related or something i think some in the MCU, yeah. or do you? Or, just sorry, sorry, sorry. Comics. comics, sorry, comics. Yeah, that might be. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's in- it's interesting. So in in so real quickly, uh, speaking on like the Asgardian gods, I think Taika was pretty committed to moving the the Asgardians away from being aliens, essentially, because I know like Brana wanted to like ground it and make them aliens, and the, 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 these are just really powerful, long lived aliens. And I think Taika is the one who's kind of like, no, no, no. There's they're more than that. They are they can't, right now in Ragnarok. They kind of played with the idea that they are ethereal beings as well yeah, as with, aliens. With mm-hmm. Odin, definitely, like he like he doesn't just die. He like materializes yeah. back into the universe. Yeah. So like that is definitely more godlike. Yeah, he just disper- he just disperses. 
That's yeah. It. So I think there's a, I think there's a, and I, th- I think it goes to what you're talking about with like Bast Sparks with like, I think there's a, a shift in the MCU that we're seeing that we're seeing now gods as like ethereal, extra dimensional creatures instead of just like these, aliens. these a- a- aliens things that we've seen before. Which I'm all about because so, that just means bigger and like more cosmic. So yeah. Tefnut is there. And if you were to put, uh, me up against the wall, I would say that Tefnut's avatar looks like they're at least close to Wakanda, if not in Wakanda, uh, mm. by mm. Garb. Uh, Tefnut, that would make sense. Tefnut is closely related to Bass. They are both uh, cat-faced gods. Yeah. Um, there, There is a lineage connecting them. Uh, so I'm just, we'll see. I just think that'd be cool if we get some kind of like Egyptian god a, mm-hmm. tying stuff with Bast. There was a rumor if you recall a while back that Bastet, the female version of Bast was cast in Thor love and thunder. Oh yeah. Like, like a yeah, physical, it would not, it would not shock me if we're going to get some connection between these folks and maybe the missing gods from the Ennead are going to be tied into Thor love and thunder. I just think that, like that choice, they know what gods they wanted to be shown in the Ennead scene. They're mostly the ones of the classic Ennead. Uh, they picked carefully who was and wasn't there. Uh, I, I just don't think they did that willy nilly. I think there's purpose yeah. to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I agree. I'm just interested in what what we'll get to see, and and like uh, th- all the more to the point of like Khonshu can still be an important god, just like Bast is, even if they're not part of the Ennead. Yeah. The Ennead is just like the the higher council of of the Egyptian gods, and even then, like it's not a consistent like how that exists thing because there are different, just like Norse mythology, there are eras to this. Yeah. Uh, so like they're they're part of the newer age uh they're very much tied to like the children of raw not the age of raw yeah we get some um probably the coolest like like special effect scene in the show so far is turning back turning the sky. if i could oh. turn back time oh man that scene i love that the sky yeah, it was it. so cool very, it kind of almost dr strangey doing this thing oh, this but see, yeah, it's like, like i can't i can't do this alone just do what i do because he knows that mark's not going to come out he's just 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 follow my lead and we'll get this done but when when this happens when you wake up, tell Mark to free me because he knows what's going to happen. So, like the the whole like when he, the, when they're turning the they're turning the sky. I also really like the scene the, just before that when when they talk about the the night and conscious like I remember that night. I remember all nights. I remember every night. I I re- thought that was all really really well done. The whole sequence oh, yeah. there, good stuff. Yeah. I'm into it's, that. It's it's amazing because like yeah they get they get the star map. They're like okay like we need to look at this constellation, but. It was two thousand years ago, and Conchie's like, oh, "I can fix that." Uh, oh, so that's that's something back. also. That's all also something I really like because I've never seen that in an adventure story before, where where you know, when when like star charts wouldn't be accurate, and so yeah. like they often kind of like skip over that bit, and so so having that extra pe- yeah. piece of like, it, look, if it's not the stars don't change that frequently, but it, this could be miles away from where it was two thousand years ago. Yeah, it's a neat it's a neat little a little. Uh, uh, add-on you're like it's something you don't think about and it's like they actually thought about it yeah. yeah yeah one other thing i also really want to give credit to this scene is that i mean we see the sky moving but a lot of times in film you only see the characters who are witness who are like trying to do the thing it's like oh wow this shows the entire city of cairo reacting to the sky to the light show up in the sky and you know yeah, i mean yeah, now you yeah. see harrow where he's like oh you're screwed but, but yeah, Harrow's line of like, you brought this on yourself, can't you? Yeah, but the whole time where you see all these people like staring at the sky is like, what the f- is going on? Again, it's like, it's a Tuesday. It's just like the yeah. sky's going crazy. It's just there's a there's a there's a meme that I saw that where it's just like the sky turns and just the Avengers. What the hell's going on over there? Yeah, yeah like a panel. It. <laughs> it's like you know, walk outside. It's like, um, how come and the it's, sun is moving all like that? And it's a cool effect because like Kanchu can only affect the night sky. So like you just you just see the night skies turn and you see like the as it gets quicker, you see like the stars and the moon kind of flying, kind of uh, creating like a figure eight. And um, yes. and when he when they stop it, it's like it's like trying to you see like the it's trying to go back to the normal night sky and they're just like holding it. It's a good it's a good effect. I thought I liked mm-hmm. it a whole lot. No, I liked it a whole lot, too. Yeah. Um, I, I, I like speaking of the meme stuff. I like the one where it's uh uh, the the night sky getting turned and then Doctor Strange somewhere going what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> waking him up and he's like oh no do I have to deal with this now too yeah yeah exactly is it my movie already <laughs> yeah. no it, it, it'd be Wong just Wong's like oh, uh, I'm coming Steven, Wong, can you yeah. be the Supreme again Wong is enjoying his tuna melt at the Sanctum Centaurum he looks up he's like 
Not again. I would not say no to a tuna melt. <laughs> right. Um. So after we, we get the, the Indian scene, and then we get uh, Rogue Man. Uh, we get the what we just talked we just about, talked which about is that. rotating the sky. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we've covered a lot of... Oh, I wanted to go back to... Sorry, Brandon, it's another slight negative. Um, Is it Hera? It's, it's going back to... No, it's okay. going back to um, uh, the comments you guys made about, like, uh, sometimes this show makes jokes in not the best way. Oh, yeah. That, and yeah. This, one, yeah. this one really bothers me, which yeah. is um, when... Is it the kid when he dies? The kid, when yeah. the kid cuts his uh, scarf and falls to his death, and then Conchu's like, hmm, I thought he'd talk. And I'm like, boy, that was someone committing suicide, and I don't yeah, know if I, this was the right time to play a line like that. It's, 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 it, I, I, I keep rubbing against it, Anna, because I remember I told you when I yeah. first watched it, yeah, like, in the first episode, there's some of that, I'm like, it's EMCO it's fine. This is straight up a kid killing himself. And he's like, oopsie, I didn't think he was going to do that. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, can we just please I think that's a little, a I don't want to do this. No, I think it's that's okay. a little it's reductive. Okay. I think that's a little reductive of what of that moment. Yeah. I don't think it was meant. It was meant for comedy. I think it was meant to show how how ruthless Conchu can be. That's how I, I took it. I, I I will agree with you. I think it, I think it could be read both ways though. Like his like half that's crazy. Fair. Half, yeah. Uh, I just yeah. I, I don't disagree. I just think like it's not so much the line itself. It's that. We can't I don't live think, in it. I don't think we sat in the moment of that kid committing suicide yeah. as much as we did. Just like I don't think. I'll put it this way. I don't feel like the show conveyed it as the weight of a suicide because it's tied to like religious belief. And so like they make that feel different, like that hits different. And I'm like still a 16 year old that just committed suicide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just don't know that we let the weight of that actually hit. Yeah. You also mentioned that you don't like how Haro's scene at the end when he's talking to Conscious Statue. OK, OK, I really want to be specific here. I love everything Harrow says to, to Conchu. Conchu. Yes. I think that's really good stuff. I love everything Harrow says in the trial too. I think all of that is like building to what I was talking about at the beginning of our discussion with Harrow being driven by his, what Conchu did to him and like knowing how to weaponize that the way he speaks to him, his disdain for him, uh, who he made him out to be. I think all of that is great. My problem is I don't understand at all why Osiris would bring him in to gloat to Khonshu and leave him alone in the temple. That makes no goddamn sense. He's not part, mm -hmm. Harrow is not not only not part of the Inuit, he's like an ex-Avatar. He he has no There's reason. no reason to do it. And and you're probably saying, oh, it's because Osiris is bad and he's working with Amit. There is no sign whatsoever that Osiris is working with Amit. There's no clear sign. If they would have given me a sign of like, I'm doing this all for her, anything like that, I would be fine. And if any, and if any God was going to be a traitor, it ain't him. It wouldn't so be Osiris. Like, so like, I don't. It's interesting that you brought that up because that never once passed through my mind. The idea that he could be working for Osiris. Uh, Osiris well, then, could be wanting to on it. Well, that's, that's so then that's what's the point? point is this, like, why it's... would this God allow this random man to yeah. come in and, and a buried Egyptian God? I'll be honest with you. Like the trial bothers me more in hindsight because of this scene because it feels like just absolute gross incompetence on the part of the Egyptian gods to a degree that I just don't understand because I don't know what purpose at all Osiris has in bringing Harrow there. Again, like it's cool to have him do the speech thing to Khonshu. Uh, I could have bought that like once he's entombed any relic uh, or statue of Khonshu is a conduit to talking to him and he could have talked to a different conduit to Khonshu and said the same things and I would have been cool but the fact that like he's brought into the sacred temple of the Ennead to do this is weird I don't get that it. he's left alone to do it is super weird it makes no sense and again like it would make sense if he was working for the bad guy but that's not something you, that you thought Brandon so like what was the point of that scene I mean the point of the scene is what he says to him no I'm sorry like, like what's the, the point of the, the god location. being the one mm -hmm. to bring it to him yeah. like that that ruined, there's nothing to like the other thing for me is it implies that osiris went to get him and i'm like if osiris went to get him or like called upon him in another way wouldn't he again see where he is and what he's doing and that conscious was right like i'm just like it, it it creates such a hole of like i just don't understand why conscious would even turn to the gods if they're this bad at what they what they do or how they take again that's why like, the, the people abandon this, this is this is just a very confusing move to me i don't Osiris himself calls this a sacred temple. I don't know why Harrow gets invited in a second time to just talk at Conchu's statue. Sure. You're, what you're saying is essentially that 
um, there is a, a sense of overcompensation when it comes to showing how over, over, um, uh, over, um, overcompensation when it comes to showing how incompetent the gods are. Yeah. I just like, again, I love the dialogue of what Harrow's saying. I just feel like we could have done it in a way that didn't make the gods look super stupid. Mm -hmm. Cause uh, the trial's not great uh, to me for its handling of the things. It's this scene that really puts me over the moon about like, what are the gods even doing? That's what, yeah. I'm, that's what I'm trying to find the motivation. Cause again, if you've given me a sign that Osiris is working for Amit and he brings Harrow like, hey, look, we did this for you. Fine, none of that. This random god is like, hey, you know that prisoner we put away? You want to come talk to him real quick? That doesn't make any sense. Like, one, why? One of those gods in the Ennead is literally the god of wisdom. Like, I don't know what we're doing here. <laughs> like, this is a little weird. Yeah. And again, like, I, I do like, like, like you forged me. Like, you're the reason I am the way I am. Like, that is awesome. I love that. But like, this is the way we had to get there. I like, it didn't make sense to me. It wouldn't yeah. even be the first time I've heard of like an Egyptian thing where they say like any, when the gods are being called to any uh statue or representation this is common in egyptian mythology any any single representation of their deity is a way to speak to them that's cool and so like i we could have just he could have had a little conchu thing of his own or gone to where a statue was that he knew about and said this to him because he knew he got imprisoned after the night sky thing and i'd be like that's cool yeah i just it's this making osiris culpable in a way that i don't get uh harrow yeah. had access to their to their world in a way that that part is not clear why Harrow would be so welcomed by them. Yeah. Putting a little bit of a point on what I, what I was trying to say about like the, uh, the, the gods, there's a sense that like when Mark says, what about the gods? Would they do anything? Um, if Khonshu doesn't do if we essentially make the, the eclipse happen, the gods won't be bothered with this. They won't, right. they won't talk to him. Um, and so he's like, I, it's like, do, do you have a good idea? And I have a bad idea. And so he makes the, he makes the thing. Um, so there is a, there is a, a, a sense that like, I think what the scenes are trying to do and then what your guys are saying that they, what they do badly is that they're trying to say that the gods are, useless the egyptian gods are completely useless completely uh, completely incompetent they cannot be called upon they cannot be used in any sort of way shape or form yeah i i feel like there's an amount where yeah i i don't know it's just uh, there's something so jarringly not clear to me about why harrow would have access to this place sure like i think about like there's no it I'm thinking like what I know of the Egyptian, the actual like Egyptian mythology version of Osiris, but like there's no way Osiris would welcome someone like Harrow into a sacred temple like that. But there's also no reason that Hathor would allow it. Hathor already doesn't trust him, even though she's going along with the rest of the Ennead because she doesn't entirely trust Khonshu, but she doesn't trust him either. And that's the thing, like they showed Hathor siding with Moon Knight. So if mm -hmm. you would have showed Osiris, even if it doesn't make sense, if they showed Osiris working with Ahmet, none of it, I'd have no problem. Again, there's no context to the scene we're watching, so I'm just confused by it. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just like it. We had to get Harrow here. Doesn't matter how. Doesn't matter how it happens. Don't think about right. it. I'm like, but I'm a, I'm a thinker. It's what I do. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't necessarily think the show doesn't want you to think. I just think that what they're doing is is poorly poorly done. Yeah, yeah. I and this is one where like I just feel like it's it's poorly thought through. They're just like, oh well, we should have him. We need to have him talk to Khonshu's statue so we need to have him brought there and I'm like but you didn't there were other ways around this this mm -hmm. this didn't work because it, yeah. it just doesn't really add up it's like the gods respect this former avatar of Khonshu more than Khonshu himself and there's just no indication of why they would do that yeah I like the dialogue though I do I agree yeah. everything he says to Khonshu a plus really great i think it informs his character really well it's again like feeding into everything i like about it it's just the fact that he's brought into the temple to do it and then like on top of that left alone again i can't like get past that i'm like for all they know like he could steal it he could smash it he could i don't know i fully expected him to crush the statue like in his hand not only that he has access to all the other god statues that are in that room too and they just let him be there yeah yeah i guess i kind of felt like it was it was because they were like oh yeah Kanchi wrongly accused you and so we're going to show you what we did and blah 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 but anyway it doesn't matter um uh, anything else we want to bring up ben you got anything mr quiet man no not really i mean cool. you guys covered it pretty well um let's see anything else um 
I, I'm just ready. I'm ready for more flashback stuff. I want to see. The thing that I'm, I am the most worried about is that we don't fully go into the DID stuff. Um, like how he got there uh, and, and why why it's part of um, him. And it's just being, it will just, just be used as a device rather than something somebody's going through. I that hope, is my biggest worry. I hope so we far. get that. I hope we get that clear indication of trauma. Yeah. That's what I'm. That's what I'm waiting for. Is yeah. that that clear indication of trauma, uh, being being a catalytic uh, presence. Mm -hmm. Um, I know I sound kind of down on episode three. I, I'm willing to fully admit that. Like part of it is like just really admiring the Egyptian gods and like this representation was mm, a, a a notch below what I wanted out of it. Um, just because of like I want them to to be uh, respectable. <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, in 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 a in not so nice way. But I think I'd be hotter on the episode if it wasn't for like again that whole side venture that just kind of feels like it it slows the plot down rather than keeps it moving. Mm -hmm. um, that's the part uh, that really really drags me on this episode. My only desire for the show at this point, well, for a good show, but I'm not so okay. I I I've been kind of I've been kind of. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll say it here. Um, I've been I've been kind of uh, a little wishy washy on on how I feel Mark's Jewishness should be portrayed in the show. I'm not very Jewish. I don't I don't need I don't need to see Mark Spector wearing a yarmulke and lighting a menorah every every scene. He's wearing a Star uh, David though. I I would like to see I would like to see something a little bit more than just wearing a Star of David in the show because i i am i am starting to see a a a clear through line in the mcu of jewish erasure that's getting frustrating the more we go on yeah um and i i would like to see that change and because it is so important to moon knight that he is jewish um in a way that it's not honestly it's not as important to to wanda but it is still insulting when she when we flash back to wanda's room and she's got crosses like what are we doing um so like I, I would like to see i would like to see more come from moon knight to show me that you actually appreciate the fact that this character it does come from a jewish lineage yeah. it, it, it is a jewish character and we're not just going to be like yeah whatever I will, uh can uh can you elaborate on that just a little bit like what what do you want to see the show do um, I just kind of want to know. Honestly, I can't tell you. Okay. I on, like honestly, at the end of the day, I can't tell you because the thing is like, all I know is, all I've seen is that the MCU likes to not acknowledge religion, and whenever it does, it just defaults Christian. Sure. Can and I, I don't want to see that again. I don't want to see that I, keep happening. Can I narrow down the question a little bit more? Are you? Do you want to see more like more things that just speak to the fact that he is jewish like the star of david necklace like in a flashback we see that he's like uh attending something or, in the in the, in like the comics or do, you want it, or do you want it to actually be like an incorporated story beat about him being jewish basically the, do you want it to be more like presentational or do you want to actually be narrative the bare minimum is the star of david but if we are getting flashback sequences it, or at least a reference in the in the early comics he was raised by a rabbi right like to see that sure i'll tell you um with three episodes left i i don't see how they can do any anything that's of significance i'm being honest specifically all i need like, all i need is for Mar is for a line to say the rabbi who raised me blah 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 that's all i need okay okay if that's mm -hmm. enough then okay yeah um like because with the storyline specifically that you're dealing with i don't see how we can unless we're going back to his childhood i could see i could see a, a way for like what brandon's saying which is where like layla wanting to understand him better and yeah. so he's like uh kind of detailing some of his story how he ended up where he was and yeah. he's like i was raised by a rabbi and yeah. blah 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 and like that was just included in the like that's kind of the thing you're talking about like something like yeah. that yeah. yeah i think there's room that they could still pull something like that out yeah yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. Because once you get to the once you get past Moon Knight, you're you're running into you're running into a problem. You're going to start running into a problem, which is Jewish erasure. And the, and once once I start getting upset about that, you know, you're starting to cross a line because I don't particularly care about my Jewishness. Right. You're not you're not super sensitive to it, but even you are starting to recognize it. Yes. Sure. I understand that. That's fair. Um. Yeah, that'd be cool if they did more than just have the Star of David there. Yeah, I'm glad they had that there at all. 
Me too. Uh, Oscar, I, did, I honestly didn't ex- expect it, and then it was there, and I'm like, oh, that's Oscar nice. Isaac. This could just be him and doing like what everyone does in interviews and like praising the show more than maybe what it's going to give. Yeah. He has said that there is both in depth Jewish stuff and the ID stuff in the show. If that hit the cutting room floor, we'll we we we'll see. Yeah. Uh, but he said himself in an interview that I watched that both those things are tackled. That could just be marketing bullshit. I really hope it's not because I trust Oscar Isaac more than other mm-hmm. actors who pick the roles. At this um, point, at this point, I said what the bare minimum of what I want is. I hope that's that's and and that's, say the that's, word rabbi, we win. Yeah, I think exactly. that's uh, I think that's super super valid. I yeah. wonder if like some amount of of acknowledging it will be tied to because you just said that thing about in depth Judaism. If we're going to get that like again that trauma catalyst, if we're going to get some indication of what it was or explanation around it, if more not necessarily saying those two things will be connected but like yeah. knowing more about his his jewish background will also be included in finding out about that trauma that's um, nice yeah. just because they would happen at the same time not necessarily oh because they're connected yeah i'm glad you like guys let me talk about that thank you of course um i've been kind of biting my important. i've been kind of biting my tongue about it online for a while no i think what? that's i think that's that's brand interest anything to talk about that's what you should be talking about i know it's just that's super super valid and i'm really glad you brought it up because it's just it's not something I'm going to think about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, frankly, like it, it's just not. And, but I'm glad you brought it up because I think that's a super good point. Um, that, that should be, it should be more, even more present than it already is. Yeah. Um, like <laughs> the story can find room for it. I, again, like I'm not trying to shit on that scene, but the scene with midnight man, like that's definitely room where like, I would trade that out for something that, it, that included more of like, who he who he is being yeah. as being a uh, jewish like yeah. like the there there is room in the six episodes where they can put something in so i do hope that they've taken advantage and actually put something in yeah I, yeah all right shall we get out of here let's a wrap it up all right um what are, so what are our, what are our hopes for where we're going i i i honestly don't know like I, I, I have no idea because like I didn't know what episodes two and three oh, were we, gonna be. Did we talk about this, us and not on this show what? about the, the 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 ramen tut uh oh jacket? Okay, detail? so okay, so uh this might be just just an Easter egg, but uh the Egyptian kid who kills himself, he's wearing a jacket that has the face of Ramen Tut, who is the Egyptian King the Conqueror variant when he rules Egypt. Oh. Uh, it is just like a decal design of his face. People have been like, oh, it's not him, but like. There's a specific cover, a Mike Del Mundo King cover of Ramen Tut's face, and it looks almost just like that, but without his face in it, like the, the design of it. Uh, that could just be so I brought fun up, stuff. I brought up to Ryan that I I wondered if the avatar that betrayed uh, Amit that we fi- that we hear about was Kang, was a Kang variant. Oh, that, that could be, and that that's how we're going to get even more of that, like, and how we get that Egyptian tie stuff for. Yeah, Kane. I I generally <laughs> am like you don't have to tie everything together, but specifically because we're dealing with Kang now, and Kang was a a pharaoh of Egypt back right. then uh, when he wasn't supposed to be as a weird white man, but he's you know he's Jonathan Majors now. Uh, right, they could do some really really excellent shit tying all of this stuff together. Uh, if they will, we'll see. I I think I think we might not even necessarily find it out in this show, which I'm not I'm not hoping that we do. Yeah. But I do think it'd be cool if that was something built in so that later we can be like, yes, he was that former avatar of Amit uh, in one of his variations. And I, I think that'd be really cool. Be, I think it would I think it would track well. That'd be sick. That'd be cool. Yeah. It'd be, and be a good way to keep some of that, again, like the Egyptian stuff of Kang present. Yeah. Um, yeah. Rather, there's than, no other, rather than taking it away. Because like there's no other place naturally you could include that. Like, like if you go to Egypt, Ant-Man 3, it's gonna be like, well, that's kind of interesting, I guess. But like in Moon Knight, <laughs> it makes sense. So like, it, this would be the culmination to do that type of thing. Like, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. At the end of the day, I just want a good show. Yeah. So so far, I'm I'm I am happy with it still. You yeah. know, like we, we know how these things go here on Fake Nerds Watch. I don't like sitting in a world where I watch an MCU show and I'm kind of biting my teeth, being like, okay, do I like this? I like this. I liked this. This was good. But will I like the next one? And constantly being scared that I'm not going to like the next one. It is a thing, and we we kind of talked about it a little bit. Sparks like. It is the kind of thing where, after, like, this is another show where, like, it's a mystery show, so we have to kind of wait and see to get the full thing. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I kind of just wish I could watch a show, and after one episode, I'd be like, that was just an episode of TV. Yeah, I'm still like waiting. Peacemaker, like Peacemaker. Right. I was gonna say, I'm I'm still waiting for an MCU show to like hit the level where like I watch a Peacemaker episode and I end the episode and I'm like solid. I like that was a satisfying and, like, story. Big, yep. And yeah. like Moon Knight hasn't quite hit that 
that point for me. Yeah. Episode yeah. two was close. Episode two is real good. Really liked it. Um, oh, um, so uh, Mohamed Diab, who directed episodes, he's did episodes, episodes one, three, five, and six. Um, Benson Moorhead did, are doing episodes two and four. So I really like episode two. So I suspect I'll like episode four. They are also going to be the lead writers on Loki season two. And they are mm -hmm. incredible sci-fi indie darlings. So, like, that makes me really stoked for Loki season two now. For so. sure. Can't yeah. believe the Daniels almost uh, were up for the for up for Loki. No, did you hear about that? Nah, Loki would have been great, but no, nah, they couldn't have skipped everything. But they they chose to do everything everywhere all at once. But they were approached to to do Loki. Oh, I think um, they made the right choice. But they probably yeah. didn't make the right choice. And it's Loki it's probably... crazy. It's crazy that they were like, mm, I guess we could do Loki. I still like Loki right. too. So, yeah. I told you after that movie came out, like it's going to be a race between WB and oh my God. to secure them for something now. Twenty million dollars, thirty million dollars. Um. Okay. That'll do it. Move Shall night. we <laughs> get out of here? Um, Wrap it oh, up. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel. You can find all sorts of shows. This is Fake Nerds Watch for Moon Knight. Uh, we'll see if we continue if we do the, another one next week. You know, just stay tuned. There's a lot of stuff happening right now, so like, I just gonna really flux. We're moving. I'm, I'm pretty confident in saying we're going to do episodes four and five in, in one go and then probably one last big finale episode. I I, I, I think highly, so too. highly doubt that we're going to do episode four by itself, given uh, how our next week looks. I think so, too. I mean, it's, it's basically three of us are going to be in Monterey. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah. So we'll, we'll, so, uh, so stay tuned for that and, you know, other things. But of course, stay tuned to you know, look at our schedules and whatnot. I post everything on Instagram. So keep you guys in the loop. So you check out all sorts of other shows we have here. If you like our Marvel discussion, and you can check out all of our other Marvel discussions. We've done all the other Marvel shows. Loki was mentioned. We did that. Falcon Witch Soldier, we did that. WandaVision, we did that. Um, check out all of those um, as well as uh, currently as well as Moon Knight is a Star Trek Picard fake nurse watch series. And then Star Trek Strange New Worlds comes out in two weeks. I'm oh. very excited. Um, so that'll start up as soon as Picard is over. So Strange New Worlds. So just continue on the Star Trek train. It's been a lot of fun. Really enjoy doing that. Um, and check out, of course, Basement Arcade, which are our video game Let's Play series. Basement Arcade Pause. Basement Arcade pause menu which is our video game discussion series uh animation station which is our animation discussion series and fake nerd book club which is our book our comic book discussion series um and of course conversation is uh under production i've had i've had a road bump i think i two of us recorded it's coming i'm working on it i apologize it's so late um and that'll i think that's everything i should plug of course the Fickner, the Fickner podcast which is our mothership show which does everything from discussions to you know, it's all discussions. It's all discussions. They're all day, every day. Um, we we discuss. We, we've just discussed. If you're watching this, we've just discussed everything, everywhere, all at once, um, because it's probably going up after that that drops. Um, and of course, Sonic the Hedgehog two was a dis was a recent discussion. And this coming episode will probably be something like Unbelievable Weight of Massive Talent or The Northman or something. <laughs> We'll see. Um, good movies. Oh, man. I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, but it will not be Fantastic Beasts. Nope. Screw that movie. Go, go somewhere else if you're looking for commentary on that. Sorry. Yeah. We, we will never discover the secrets. No. Um, and that's everything I need to plug. Some guy I met for the first time last night was like, yeah, I liked it. And I was like, cool. I just met you, so I'm not going to believe it. Yeah. <laughs> Seemed like a nice oh. dude. <laughs> no way. Unfortunately, Cookie Cookie went to see it, and we 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 started recording, and he was like, "I really liked it." I'm like, "Oh, oh. listen, I I'm glad you liked it. I'm glad you liked it. It's fine, but I'm not. I'm no. Um, okay, Victor podcast on all the social medias. Uh, we can subscribe to our, our Patreon. You can buy merchandise on T Public. All links below. Um. I'm a BT McClure on Instagram and Twitter. I also write for for Kaiju Rama Media, edit the website, um, Screen Rant, and Atomic Geekdom. You can find more videos, uh, more uh, MCU discussion pieces uh, there. So, uh, yeah, BT McClure on Instagram and Twitter. Ben. You can find me on the internet at Ben Magnet 27 on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and also writing for oh, Fusion TikTok. Gaming Magazine, Old School Gamer Magazine, and GoNintendo.com. Sparks. You can find me struggling to keep up with all the videos we're making and editing them out at Sparks Witty on Instagram, Twitter, S P A R K Z Witty. Ryan. Hey, you could find me just constantly sharing Elden Ring videos and now Moon Knight meme pictures 
there's a great there's a great Moon Knight uh, uh, comic from the mid 2000s where he gets into a fight with Taskmaster and Taskmaster is like, you have no idea to hear about the fight. And Moon Knight's like, you have no idea to hear about the fight. It starts to <laughs> starts to uh, uh, rip his, his face off. And Taskmaster's like, no, my God! It's so good. Taskmaster almost gets his face ripped off on Moon Knight. Love it. It's DJ Tony Snark. Um, all right. So like this video, subscribe to this channel. Until next time we see us, guys, stay fake nerds.